Hello and welcome to Pitching In, the story podcast that explores the difference between taste and expertise. I'm Christian Barrett and joining me as, I was going to say as always, but joining me for this week and as, as pretty regular now, uh, Ryan Wisdom. Hi, how are you going? And Jane Wright. Hey guys. Thank you so much for joining me um, and joining, thank you everyone to, for joining us on Pitching In. This is going to be a good episode. We're very excited. It's kind of a chilly uh, Sunday afternoon uh, in Perth, WA. And today we are going to be We're doing weather about... reports now as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, we just all, we're all so cold and I'm sitting here in shorts. Well, we, just discussed, I'm a bit cold. we just discussed the knee blankets and so we uh, need to bring them out. We're getting um, older. And speaking of getting older and day, days gone by, yeah. today we are talking about the 1985, I guess you would say cult classic, teen comedy adventure, The Goonies. Yes. yes. Uh, directed by run, Richard Donner. I mean, it says story by and presumably produced by Steven Spielberg as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually co it was written by Chris Columbus, who's the director of the first Harry Potter movie and the yep. first and second Harry Potter movie and the Home Alone movie. Yes, as well. so you've got the Holy Trinity there from the I 80s, mean, really. Wow. Like, some yeah, big names yeah. thrown a lot together. Of big names being, being thrown around there. Um, and obviously, you've got Thanos himself is yes. one of the yes. characters. Um, um, in his first Josh role. Brolin, in his, his first, first role. Yeah, in his first yeah. movie role. Yeah, official yeah. full movie role, which is cool. Um, absolutely fantastic. And a, and a wonderful cast of uh, 80s kind of stalwarts, I guess, with, yep. um, with Corey Feldman. Sean. Um, uh, Sean Austin, Corey Feldman's in there. Oh, man, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up the kid who plays Data. Can I just say, straight off the bat, before we get into it, Fantastic casting for this film. Totally. It's and watching it back was just an absolute joy yeah. to see a bunch of young kids in scenes where yeah. they almost I didn't feel like they were directed too much. I felt like they really yeah. had this open space to be these amazing characters. Yeah. And there's some great dialogue. I reckon some of it's definitely ad lib. It's just it's just too yeah. fresh and too yeah. and too cool and too <laughs> great. yeah to to be something that's been over directed. Well, there was a scene that I saw where. Uh, they they're, they're riding their bikes down a hill and they come to a stop and as they do um, uh, Sean Astin drops the map that he's holding on mm. the road almost bumps into Corey Feldman on his bike after doing like a weird wobbly skid yeah. and almost falling off his own bike and then has to rush back to pick up the map and then they continue the shot and they go hey guys 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 here it is and then they finish up in this beautiful kind of panoramic scene as they look across over the coast sort of getting their getting their bearings to chase down this treasure that they're chasing and it still really it works really well. Yeah. It feels really organic, but it's like no, he almost fell over. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He almost fell he over did. off his bike. I, that, right? that would have given me a little bit of a nervous feeling. <laughs> I mean, it was a lawsuit. As a bike rider in the yeah. 80s. Yes. I'd be like, oh, a, a bit of sand. In the hey, hang on, a lot of the 80s films required BMX bikes to be ridden. We had ET, had to do it as well, so there was a lot of films. BMX bandits. But that's what we that did 80s. back then. That's all we did. With no helmets, yeah. because they didn't come oh, in yeah. until later in the no. probably late 80s. Yeah, and I, I didn't have to start wearing a helmet until I was about. Yeah, it just wasn't the thing. Until the fun police rocked up, up and mm. told everyone you couldn't have baskets on the front of your exactly. bike. Exactly, and I got and a white helmet. stack helmet. Is okay. that what they called it? Yeah, they, they were stack helmets, oh, wow. yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so we've got um, Sean Astin as Mikey, Josh Brolin as Brand. Isn't Brandon or something? It's Brand. Brand. It's Brand, it's brand. brand when I looked it That's up. That's what they called it. I thought brand. it was Brandon. Brand. But, but I thought, brand. does it um, Jeff Cohen was Chunk, Corey Feldman obviously with Mouth. Yeah. Kerry Green was Andy. And... Um, uh, Martha Plimming. Martha Plimming. She was in. Steph. I remember her from Parenthood. Um, Parenthood. That's She's what I. Great. Very famous. But also there was that that sitcom that she was yeah, in. Yeah, she was in a good. Uh, oh. She was in Beautiful Girls. Yeah. Um, ooh, there where is was that? a series. Which Jonathan was just... K. Kwan was. Oh, there um, it is. Was Data? Was it that one? Very famous for being um, short round in Indiana Jones. Mm. Yeah, Raising Jonathan Hope. K. Raising Hope. That's the one. Ah, yes. So that's I'm not it. familiar with Raising Hope. I've yeah, heard of it. it was kind of. I've heard of it, but I haven't. A bit of a grown up Malcolm in the Middle kind yeah, of. Yeah, kind of. Um, what's that Earl? That Earl series that was out. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. My name is Earl. My name is Earl. It was yep. a bit like that. It was a bit uh, cheeky, a bit tongue in cheek, mm -hmm. I guess as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, like once again, great cast. Yeah. And mm. I mean, great '80s peeps all together. Feldman, like when he was just killing it in the films back then as well. So I mean, he was part of like it's almost like the teen, not the, like between Brat Pack or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure Corey Haim mm. was broken hard when he wasn't cast in The Goonies. Oh, because they were friends. They were very good friends. This I think this is what I've read, and it was sad because it was all just. Um, him sort of jealous in the background oh, or a bit upset. Well, well, that's changed out. everything. Thanks mm. for that. Oh, no. um, was he going to try and be Mikey or something then, I guess? I don't know. Yeah, I don't no, even that, think he that, was asked. Yeah. He just assumed because they had just, worked together. He just assumed. <laughs> he just assumed. He was just waiting well, for the part. He's like, never oh, a shoe. And it happened with yeah, um, right. Lost Boys too. 
because he wasn't cast in that. And oh. Not long after that, he died. So oh, it's sad. Okay. It's really sad. Well, this podcast has turned. Uh, anyway, Sorry, so that's the uh, yeah. Wow. We'll go um, on to okay, so in terms of, let's go into our fandom. So in terms of yep. fandom, where would you guys put yourselves? Um, like, obviously, we're going to talk about like the rating and stuff. Whatever mm-hmm. we give this film later on, but in terms of your your kind of dedication and the, like the number of times you've seen it and kind of how big of your how big a part of your childhood it was, where mm-hmm. would you kind of put this film? This is massive for me. Pretty massive. This is like a a life altering movie. Oh, that's great! Wow. Wow. Can um, I ask how old you? How old were you? Around how old were you I, when you watched? it? I think I was a bit too young when it came out at the movies. Mum wasn't sure, mm. and then I saw it. I was allowed to watch it. It was eighty five. Because it was an adventure film, no, I was allowed to watch it when it came out on right. video, um, VH, VHS. <laughs> um, well, stuttering. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then I watched it. I was, I was sick home from school, mm. and then we just continued. Like we loved it. Our family. Yeah. We love romancing the stone. You know those real adventure yeah, movies. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's a it's a top film. I'm the same as Jan. I. I I think I watched it at the cinema, and this is just just a feeling. I mean, I know I watched a lot of those films at the same time, because the cinema I grew up in a country town was like the place to go, and it would have come out, and it would have been something that everyone would have seen and been talking about at school. I'm 100% pretty much sure I saw that at the cinema. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm same as Jane. I, seeing it back the other night, watching it again, just took yeah. me back to those lovely moments, how good Absolutely. that film is. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I'm still laughing at the same places I've laughed at for yep. many, many years. It's all yeah. chunk. It's and, all chunk. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Corey Feldman and <laughs> yeah, obviously Corey Sloth Feldman's and that great. as well. But not just that. You know, I laughed at a lot this time around seeing it again. The Fratellis. Was the Fratellis. Yes. Because I didn't realise that they kind of had a bit of like um, the Three stooges he stuff so all funny. the time. Yeah. If you look at them, like, there's one where the, um, is it Joe, Pol- I'll get his name right, Joe Polantano or whatever it is. <laughs> Ponta. 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 He's walking Ponta. through, Ponta. they're going underneath a, a, a sort of a door and he turns to his mother and he says, watch your head and then he bangs his head yeah i'd never seen that and i just lost it laughing i was like that is Brand such good acting well. yeah it's such yeah. good acting but it's a huge part of like i think anyone that sort of was an 80s child this film is is has to be there has to has be, to it has be. To be part of party party Liano. Liano. Yeah. 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 and i'll, it's I'll never get that right so yeah um, and he's in the matrix yeah so yeah i would say that it's uh it's kind of like a if you were to tell someone to watch a film from the 80s or a couple of films from the 80s, and, and when I spoke to someone recently that we all know, talking about the very best of sort of the 80s, you would say Goonies. It would have to be Absolutely. in it. Absolutely. It would be yep. in the probably the five films you would give them to watch because yep. it is great. Like, like quintessentially. Quintessentially, kind of. but it's so rewatchable. Absolutely. Like, there's a lot of films I've seen recently that I feel... I don't think I'd sit down and rewatch them again. Yeah, but I, that, I, it's just it's something about it. I don't know. It's and there's a, there's a lot of films from the era that are rewatchable. Maybe it's because we're all nostalgic. Yeah, and we're linked to it through that nostalgia. I, mean, part of, I do agree that a lot of films from that period are rewatchable. I think there's an earnestness and a whimsy and like yeah. a, like an openness, mm-hmm. like an excitement about the possibilities of yep. the future. That's kind of a big part of the eighties films. And it's a good time in our lives being kids, having yeah. fun. Takes you back. For and me. They're, <laughs> and, they're, and they're, they're usually shorter, tighter films. Mm. Because now everything yeah. seems to be these rolling epics. Epics, they're two yeah, hours long, yeah. and you know, and they're linked into franchises where there's about twenty other films you've got to watch, or yeah. you know, there's part of a trilogy where the middle one really lags because it's all linked the first and the and last. And they're competing with series. It, you yeah, know, there's a pressure to be something better. Mm. You know, so totally navigating. And this was just a solo them. film thrown out there um, that just kicked butt. Mm. I yeah. presume it made a lot of cash at the cinema. It, it would have been good. a massive, um, you know, blockbuster film at the time. Mm. And it's obviously on the back of Gremlins because they mm. do mention Gremlins during it, which yeah. is a little Easter egg. That's, that's in right, there. they do. When yeah. Chunks and then Chunk rings the police, and the police officer says, "It's not like me telling me about that time with the creatures that um, multiply with water." Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's obviously on the back of that as well. So you know, I never caught that. I like that. Yeah. This is another cool Feldman cool. film that's chucked in there as well. So obviously, oh wait, is that another Feldman? Yeah, he's in that as well. I didn't know that. Well, he's I the little, re- I gotta rewatch. He's that. the little mate of Billy uh, that turns yeah, up with yeah. the Christmas tree or whatever. Oh, yeah. and, I, think I vaguely part. remember him, but come yeah. on, guys, he's the guy who causes the spillage of water. I forgot. I think he was so young I just, yeah, he is. that I forgot. So um, budget was nineteen million for Goonies, and box office was sixty one point five. Okay, okay, for that time, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, that's that's big cash. That's mm. not whatever they're trying to break the it's record been selected for now. For, in 2017, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library, Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Oh, really? Wow. In 2017? Yeah, yeah that's mm. pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. Nice and tight. Wow. Um, so, in terms of my fandom, I, again, like, I'm kind of a philistine because mm. I, I... This was a movie that I vaguely remember pieces from that I really enjoyed. Like, I enjoyed the pieces of it. But I don't, maybe from when I was about six, but yep. I don't remember watching the whole film ever. 
Mm. I don't I don't fully remember watching the whole film. Uh, I feel like I must have because I remember these bits. But I remember... But is that up until recently you haven't watched the whole film? I watched it, yes, two or three days ago. Oh, so that's the first time you've watched the film the I whole way through? So. I think oh, so. Oh, wow. I mm. think so. It, like, I certainly... If I did ever watch it all the way through, it was when I was six or seven, and I don't remember it. Oh, wow. What I do remember... So pre, prior to watching it the other night, I remembered... I remembered... Um, uh, I didn't remember they landed on the ship at the end. I don't remember that. I don't remember they found the ship. Oh, so they found yeah. Willie's ship. Yeah. So I didn't yeah, remember that. Mm. Um, okay. I the the things that stood out for me were Chunk discovering slo, um, Sloth yeah. and like meeting him for the first time and trying to give him the chocolate bar. The scene where um, Mikey gets kissed by Andy. Yep. Uh, because to me that was just like wow, that's amazing. Like <laughs> getting kissed by a girl seems like the most amazing thing. He's <laughs> such a lucky duffer. Were you thinking you were Mikey? You were thinking you were Mikey. Yeah, at that I think because that memory must be from when I was about Mikey's age. Okay, I must there have seen you go. it again. I must have seen it again and gone. <laughs> and the way, cool. and the way he walks away, Mikey, with his yeah, feet dragged, which is just like, so lovely. So, he's like yeah, so yeah. happy. Love struck him. Um, but yeah, that was, I think that was it. That's all I remembered. Is it um, not, would you say it's not your cup of tea as a kid? Um, no, the memories I have from when I was really young, it really scared me. Yeah. Yes, really, and I would discuss like, that. Really That's something we'll be yeah. discussing because it's um, very interesting. That. Sloth scared me. Well, Scott, Sloth scared the shit out of anyone that watched it yeah, because it's right. different, man. And I was, I was kind of saying to Jane earlier, like it wasn't it, like obviously he's he's uh, odd looking, and yeah. and you know especially as a kid you're gonna you're gonna kind of be like, oh, I haven't seen somebody who mm. looks like that before. It wasn't, but that Sloth. in itself yeah. wasn't wasn't what scared me. It was this idea that he was treated like a monster. Yeah, yeah. and so what was he gonna do? To retaliate, mm -hmm. and I was like, "He's a big, strong, he's chained up like, as well. He's exactly, chained right? up, and he was tortured and kind of there's uh, a guy like, singing. He was mocked, yeah. exactly. Right? It's like the Frankenstein thing. The, That's what I mean. You know, yeah. that vibe well, you feel you're like, oh, what's what's like, and like in Frankenstein, with a small where he hurts, child, he's small, yeah, he's small, and it's like, yep. oh, there's part of you that goes, I can see why he's getting vengeance. Yeah, yes. and yep. you don't. That's scary. Like that was what I mm. found scary. I was like, okay, he's at some point in this movie, he's going to get out. He's going to snap, and he's going to be well within his rights <laughs> yeah. to kind of fight back. Yeah. I remember feeling sorry. That was for very him. scary. Yeah, and the abuse done to him, the throwing the food, and yeah. the you know the sort of smacking him and hitting, and him. the way you would hear him like, wail. That just like oh, that like he's just wailing. Yeah. The abuse yeah. and the neglect. Yeah, that yeah. scared and played on my mind, and mm. I had to work through that because I really wanted to commit to it when I was little and watch mm. it because mm. everyone had seen it um and and i got through it and every time i watched it with someone who hadn't seen it yet because i would introduce yeah. them to the film i'd say it's not he's not scary don't worry oh. you've just got to watch it and you won't be scared you'll you'll really but end you, up liking you'll him. like him but don't you think i mean obviously as a kid maybe you, you didn't i was a bit of an of, idiot no no <laughs> but like the, that one of my favorite parts is the fact that he starts off and you're like i'm scared of him and like all the other kid characters in the film, you realise that he's not the bad guy. Yeah. He, he can be, he's one of the heroes. Yeah. You, know? well, you find that out pretty quick once uh, Chunk's in there because it comes down to the Baby Ruth chocolate bar mm. and yeah. then they bond over the chocolate and it's when he, once the chocolate and he breaks the change mm -hmm. and you think he could murder that kid right now, he could yeah. actually eat that kid mm. and he picks up the chocolate and he eats a little bit and he feeds a little bit but chocolate. But is it strange, is it strange that I, I never felt completely safe with Sloth? Like no, I, but I but always like, thought that he could turn. Oh, uh, I think I think because that's if, fair a until bar, if a chocolate bar is going to convince <laughs> yeah. him yeah, but to be on. your best friend, then a chocolate bar could do the same in reverse. I think it's the the um the favor the yeah that he was kind enough to kindness. offer something to him. I do think yeah. By the time mm. by the time um he holds the rock up so they yeah. can escape, I wasn't worried about him. Like by the time he's fighting the he's fighting the rest of his family, I'm like, oh no. He's on the kid's side. Yeah. When but all the rest of it... But oh, Mikey just... also pushes the food to him and he kind of sees that as well. So maybe he mm. sees a connection with the kids because he's obviously a big child himself. Yeah. But one thing that is very dark as well it's towards the end... Sorry for him, guys. With, with Slot really is that sorry for him. when he's talking to his mother, he yeah, says, baby, drop me on the head. Mama. Mama, drop... Oh, my God. It's so dark. Okay. That was something else I remember. Which right? is so dark. And it's not once. She no. shakes her head and she, she says said, a couple, oh, of, a couple times. of times. Yeah. And that's the cause of Slot being... That's dark as hell. Probably one of my favorite. One of my favorite. Um, because my imagination, especially as a kid, like it would always, you know, probably like all of us get carried away, and I'd like just go off on tangents. When I saw that bit, I saw it as like a big reveal of the twist. Yeah. Of how he? Because I was like, how did he get that? Yeah, way? that's a good point. And then when she said that, I was like, oh, it's really I think bad. All of that. It's so bad. She she uh, like physically abused or some some horrible like. Yeah, she still kept I must him have with seen, them. You know? Yeah, right. Like I must have seen Batman uh, uh, with the Joker and stuff, the '89 one, and a couple oh, other things where people stuff, like yeah. fell into things yeah. and like had toxic waste affect them. And I just went, oh, she she accidentally but carelessly let a baby get mutated or changed mm -hmm. or really negatively injured, and then she just went, eh. 
Well, let's just not forget. Now, and I was like, now he's totally going to kill her. And then he just pushes her off the bike. But there's, a, like, but, oh, but there's, even, a, there's yeah. even a joke in there. Because she goes, oh, you know, maybe I did it once. And she goes, oh, maybe it was twice or something like that. And there's yep. a joke right. thrown in there. Yeah, she says which that. I think is, yep. is at a moment where it is really so... It's so dark. It's so dark. <laughs> They've thrown a joke in, which, which, having seen it as an adult now, it... Like, I couldn't kind of remember that bit until yeah. watching it again. I was like, yeah. wow. Like, I remember that, but obviously. That bit really, cre- that bit it, really creepy. Yeah, yeah. man. That's, but that's Steven Spielberg, me. anything he is involved with is quite dark. He Most does of his films, are, and they're very is it, is out of Amblin? nowhere. There's no real... Like, yeah, it is Amblin, yeah. He's well, let's, let's point out... I'm going to point out some other the other dark stuff that's in there as well, the dark yeah. tones, yeah. is um, Corey Feldman at the start when he gets told by the uh, mother to help yeah. Does it speak Spanish to yeah. that? Yeah. that yeah. He yeah. tells her there's a sex dungeon in the ceiling, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. He tells he tells he her where to put the where to put the drugs. Yeah. Where to put the drugs? Yeah, he the mentions all the drugs. Yeah, yeah. Heroin, heroin is on that list. This is a yeah. PG film. Yeah. He mentions all of that, and then he says to her also, if she doesn't do what they want or something, he'll she'll be chained down in the basement. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and fe- not fed for two weeks. So that yeah. that's that's like this is a this is a kids film, and that that is a bit of sense of humor, but using a lot of dark terminology there to get laughs. Then the next thing that also makes me laugh is oh, I'm going to completely lose my point here. Uh, I am losing my point. Dark here. things you're talking about. I'm talking about things. dark things. I'm losing it. I've lost it. Um, I'm wrong. I will talk about one. You're chucking at me. Come back to yours whenever yeah. you when we want. There was one that we were talking about where Chunk is captured by the bad guys uh, I'm on. and he's being tortured, basically. So yeah. pa- Pantalone, Pantaleone, yeah. um, is, it the is strangling thing? him, yeah. holding him by the throat, and he's crying. And he's like an 11 year old kid, and he's straight him going, We'll kill you if you don't tell us your secrets. And I was watching it kind of try not to tear up a bit. I was like, Oh, freaking chunk, dude. Like, and then, and then they're goes, threatening him. That's it. They're that's it. That's the two. To blend his they're going to blend up his hand, that's which like, they get oh it to the point gosh. of putting it in there. Oh and then the gosh. other thing is Chunk gets stuck in the freezer with the a dead, dead guy, guy. Yeah. with a bullet hole in his head. Yeah. yeah. Who we not just see once. We and see how clearly do we see him fall out of the How clearly do we see the bullet hole? For a PG film. Oh, yeah. Well, it like, is so intense. Actually, I knew I, feel like that's probably I could one of not show famous, my child. Most infamous qualities is how intense this movie is. Seeing it again film. reminded yeah. me how old you do have to be. Mm. You've, it's like, uh, you know. How old do you think? Look, I'm, I'd, say, I'd say at least kind of 12. I would say. Or 12, I feel like. Yeah. I'd say 10. Okay. I, I, think I don't have kids. You depending guys have kids. on the kid. Okay. Depending on the kid, okay. if I, I feel saw bad. Him... Some of my kids have seen it and they're younger than that, but that's yeah. just because they, they, were they I okay with it? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like handed it okay, understood it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. it isn't. I like... mean, it is kind of comic. Like it's comic violence. My kids might turn out to be twisted, but I, I you I know, mean... it's only because I made them <laughs> but they're your watch kids, classics. Probably, that's right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's well, a we definite. Have that's a definite. People in the world. Yeah, I'll bring a lot of them into it. Yeah, we can't have all the same. No, but I think Fox, if you know, if he's anything like me, nine, ten. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. yeah, that's probably about when I think I was too young to watch it when I saw it about six. I must have been at a friend's yeah. house. Well, that would yeah, be the time that I watched it again when I was like 10. Remembering it was made in the 80s, it is a different kind yeah. of. Yeah, with so like maybe, swears and sexual yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. A lot of sexual innuendo, which I don't like, uh, as in I didn't care then. Yeah. But we've changed, we've grown, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's. Kids, maybe. Yeah. Well, you've got the, you've got the, the penis, penis statue joke. You've also got the which um, I laughed a lot. The at. upskirting, the upskirting <laughs> gag with the guy yeah, trying to yeah, use trying his look, mirror. He's trying, but how is he using his mirror to look up he his is skirt? It's ridiculous. It's a, it's a mirror Troy, above his it? head. Troy. Yeah. It's a mirror above his head. It's like, what are you doing, you yeah. weird guy? Yeah. Like, what a wanker. She elbowed him in the lip, so <laughs> yeah, that's right. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. she got him back. Um, well, I like the fact that Troy keeps reappearing throughout and being like stung every time because he's in the toilet when the thing blows up, and he's also at the well. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I must yeah. admit when he when the when the toilet blew up, I didn't remember that it was him. He's wearing underwear, sitting on the toilet. <laughs> what are you up to, Troy? <laughs> when he know. exploded, and he went, "Daddy!" I was like, "Oh, is that the same guy?" Yeah, <laughs> like I was like, "Oh, I'm usually all right." Because they're at the country kind of club. Yeah, <laughs> I, I okay. I have to admit at this point though that I don't think it's an excellent movie. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's always one, isn't it? so terrible. How many pieces um, of popcorn? You said you hadn't watched it Do for how long? It? No, but years? I watched it the first time the other night and, and based off that watch. So oh, based okay. on my adult watch, I don't think it's an excellent movie. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it's okay. Like, I don't right, want to take anything away from you guys. Oh. I don't want to take anything away from you guys. And I don't... I, I just knocked over one of Sonic's vases. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> my special vases. Let's put the shadow noise in um, later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, but yes, as always, I in no way want to take away anybody else's love for it. I, I can I, hear boobs. I th- yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I we'll do, put I, them in and post as well. I do, I, I do think it is worth appreciating. I do think it is worth. Okay. I okay. wouldn't want to. I, I wouldn't dare say. Oh, it's not worth 
the the um, the respect and reverence it, it receives. Would you say in that voice tone as well? Or? No, no, I'm okay. just saying, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Then, just that's because I was that's because I was doing a, a, a lolly bird. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologise. Oh um, well. But no, I am um, bagging I, goonies and doing lolly bird. The but, wheels are but, coming off. But but I mean, ba- like basically for me, it doesn't have enough. Like uh, the characters don't change very much, mm. and the only character that changes uh, particularly um, is okay. None of them really change. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> None of them really change, and then they're kind of at the end, as everybody's celebrating and hugging their parents. They kind of tack on these little like, "Don't worry, Dad, I've learned a lesson." It's like, <laughs> "No, you didn't. What are you talking about?" Like when when um, uh, Data and his dad have a little interchange. When Dad says, "You're my greatest invention," he's like, he's kind of like, "Oh, sorry, Dad, I couldn't, I couldn't get all my inventions right." And then he's like, "You're my greatest invention." It's like, well, I guess that's like an arc. Not really. It's really loose. But yeah, nobody really learns anything or changes. Mm. Um, and and if. To me, it doesn't really count as a story if that doesn't happen. But so it's a cheap thrill. No, movie. it's just it's just it's just not as it's just um, for in the absolute nicest way. It's not very it's shallow. It's not very deep. <laughs> but, like, but but I think that that is <coughs> that is part of the beauty of it. I think to I know that we're like that it's silly. It, that's it. But there's, mm. there's nothing wrong with a bit of no. Silly and there fluff isn't. And, there isn't. I think not that, at all. But, that, uh, but I mean, like, it's it's the difference between, like, another one that's in a similar category for me is Back to the Future, where, oh for my. the most part... For the He's most just part, taking shots. Somebody wait, get me... No, no, wait, wait, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. But I think Back to the Future is an excellent movie. Okay. okay. Well, but it. it fits in a lot of the same categories, just except... Just that vase, Jane. The only All difference, right. the difference is that... that um, so, it, the difference is that um, that movie embraces the... Because t- you, you can do movies with characters where the main character doesn't change, but the world changes around mm. them. Yeah. Which I guess is kind of what The Goonies is more of, because the world does change around them. The yeah. world learns the lesson. Like, the dad is the one that learns a lesson, kind of. You know, um, and um, Mikey teaches the rest of the Goonies a lesson, kind of like he teaches them to believe that they can achieve great things. Yeah. Like this is time. our time down here. So there's a bit of that. So that still does exist, but I just find it, it's just a little bit loose, a little bit rough. Mm-hmm. But in Back to the Future, there's a definite strong <laughs> sense that, that Marty McFly sticks to his guns of what he thinks. He's like, things are going to change, things are going to change, I'm going to change history. Shit, how am I going to do this? I'm going to change history. And at the end, everybody around him changes and he is the king of, like, his, his view now works and is the way the world works. And I just think that's a really great, you know, it's like the Paddington movies. There's several movies where the main character doesn't change. Uh, Forrest Gump, main character doesn't change. Mm-hmm. But the arc of how the characters yeah. change around them is yeah. really clear, really well defined, and just lands really beautifully. I think so Goonies... How can one person change others? Rather yes, than... exactly. So it's kind of the reverse of yeah. most other stories where the main character changes by the end. But in these stories, the main character stays the same and sticks to their guns. Mm-hmm. Like Captain America is another character who mostly does that. He sticks to his guns. The world changes around him. Um, uh, and they tend to be kind of really wholesome, wholesome, straight down the line characters. Mm-hmm. But don't we get, don't we get a little bit with, what, get a bit with Chunk? Is. Don't we get a bit with Chunk because he's kind of semi selfish and all that as a character, and and he's he's a scaredy cat and he's yeah. all about himself. And then he helps Sloth and that, and he tells Sloth he loves him. And he's, I mean, I do agree with you when I watched yeah. it last night that the yeah. ending is kind of like Captain Chunk. Let's make sure everyone has a nice, happy ending because I remember they see their parents. Even yeah. that data thing, as you said, is like. That doesn't even need to be there. No, it's just I mean, a hug to his dad. Mm. It is really like it's nice, but there's nothing it's that sets it charming. up. It's definitely charming. It's definitely but sweet. There's nothing uh, that sets that but up. There isn't anything that sets it up. But there's also nothing that sets up that Chunk needs to learn how to make friends. Mm. You know, or but isn't Chunk he, but isn't he the one that is always kind of pulled the piss out they of anyway? Him. And they, they bully do. him and they truffle and he shuffle. Needs and respect. He needs to. He shouldn't yeah. have to earn their respect, and but he does somehow earn their respect. Yes, because he brings. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I mean, I guess um, it's... Uh, he saves them. Yeah, I guess it doesn't... It does. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, and a similar little thing happens with Data as well, where he um, isn't really... Appro- like, his inventions kind of made fun of, but they're, they're always using him. And there's a point where he just gets really mad and just goes, yeah, nobody appreciates me for freaking inventions. Yeah. We've been working them for months. Um, but at the, same, by the, at the same time, there's no... It's just very... It's very vague. It's just a little bit vague for mm. me. And it doesn't... There's no moments where you go, oh, this is where everything's changed. It's like it's just, it's just a classic cult. It's a bit floatier. Yeah, it is. And 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 um, yeah. So again, so I don't, I definitely don't think it's a bad film, Mm. and I don't even think it's just average. I genuinely think it's charming and it has a lot, a a, a lot of really nice things to it. But yes, but I just don't, I don't think it's excellent. I don't Mm. think it's, I don't think it's fantastically well written. And I and I feel like the the arcs as they are, it's not a dislike. To Goonies' defense, yes. I feel that everyone might think that it is an awesome all-round classic that the whole world loves. Mm. E.T. was that somehow. Yeah. And so was Grease 1. 
But I think Goonies falls under the Grease 2 kind of. I actually don't think everyone loved the Goonies. Uh, so in a way, I think we liked it because of oh, because what you're saying. Oh, because everyone didn't love it. Mm. Yeah, sure. Okay. Because um, it was like an underdog. But I don't and, think I've and ever... It was, mm. it was quite dark for your average kid's adventure thought, movie. But don't you think... I, I feel like it's um it's used as kind of a, um, a mark of credential, like a mark of credential? No. Mm. Um, for people to go, yeah, I like I like the Goonies. Yeah, I'm into the Goonies. Like it's mm. like in that cult following kind yes. of way where people yep. go, yeah, I'm Agreed. I'm cool because I'm a little bit underground and Goonies is a little <laughs> bit underground because they're literally underground. But you would be on, one of the that. only people I've heard that, and this is in all honesty, that doesn't like it. And I know that you're very strict on your films that you do like, but there's very not many, strict. No, no. I just want there to be a no. very tight story. <laughs> yeah, I know that. But then I think like. Uh, I agree. It's it's slightly underwritten, if anything. But I, I feel that certain scenes, and as I said before, I think were kind of maybe not heavily scripted and a lot of ad lib. Yeah. It just feels like it's ad lib, particularly at the start when you're at the house. There's a lot mm. going, even in the attic and that. There's a lot yeah. there. You're like, these guys are just stuffing around, yeah. and they kind of, and the directors kind of said to them, "This is what's happening," and just say it. And yeah. I did find in like one of my readings yeah. that when Mikey tells the story of um, One Eyed Willie, yeah. that he made that up, not not on the spot. They told him the story, and then no, he had he to just, tell the story of what he'd been he told. He tells it really yeah. well, and then they, yeah. and he's just adding levels but, to this. Yeah, yeah, but that was the idea mm. that they didn't want him to have it too heavily scripted. So they just it does gave, sound it does sound believable. Yeah, I mean, but. To me, um, <clears throat> but, like, if something sounds believable and seems realistic, isn't the most important part of the story. It's it it needs to be that. But if you're giving up quality storytelling and quality story arcs and character change for the sake of making it feel real in the moment, I don't think that's a worthy exchange, a worthy trade off. I think you should you should push the story as hard as you can and make it as tight as it can be, and then the believability you only give only create enough believability to get you past the suspension of disbelief so you go oh well, I'm in I'm in but if the storytelling is good enough it feels real anyway because that's what good storytelling means if it feels emotionally real and there are emotional beats that the character is going through it doesn't matter how the, it doesn't matter what the dialogue is um, or rather the dialogue isn't the point the point is that it feels real emotionally that's why there's amazing fantasies and otherwise ridiculous you know in quotation marks stories that feel really like well, when yeah, when yeah, Artax yeah. is dying in the swamp in um in Never Ending Story. Why did you have to bring that up? All right? Honestly, that's, I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. Talk about that. I'm so sorry. That's but a whole like, other podcast. Know, these, all right? these, We're not going and there. It's because, it's because... I don't want to think uh, about that scene Atreus, again. Atreus, um, Look, I'm well aware of what happens in that scene. <laughs> I don't want to go through it again, all right? Okay, I'm it's sorry. terrifying. We're well, moving away from that. I guess I'm just saying, if the story is emotionally true, it doesn't matter what else is true. I'm wiping tears away We're willing to We're willing to throw a caution of the wind on almost everything else as long as the emotional logic is there. And, um, and the emotional logic in this story isn't always there, um, but it makes up for that in the kind of, as you say, the charm of the characters mm. and the dynamics of the characters and kind of the charm of this of the childhood adventure of it and things like that. But I think something like The Sandlot Kids, which taps into a lot of similar ideas, is a much better written film. Yeah. yeah but so there's much tighter. But The Goonies has a lot of action sequences in it as well. There's a lot of, like, sneaking around. There's also a lot of, like, them yeah, trying to that... investigate. And, and so what I'm saying is that, like, it's kind of got the Indiana Jonesy thing where yeah. they, it's one sort of action yeah. piece after but another action like piece those, those... with a lot of characters. Let's not forget that it's, it's seven, seven kids. Seven, seven kids. Which is yeah. a lot, it's a lot of characters cast, I mean, put together I guess in 90 if, minutes. If an action scene takes place and no character changes happen, the action scene is pointless. Yeah, but there, but there are some of those. There, I mean, there is the one where like, the rocks are coming down and one of them runs back and grabs things and there's and Data does a, he uses his gadgets and stuff like that. There yeah, are but, moments but there's no, of, but there's no Yeah, but there's no character changes. I do so think that they had a So the characters don't grow or learn anything new. Each time something like that's ha that happens, you need the characters to go, ooh, the way I used to be doesn't work here. I need mm. to change my behaviour and then I can solve this problem. That's what story is. But if they had a known how popular it was going to be, I, wish, I bet they wish they could... <laughs> Maybe may make the script a little better, but I do think that um, if it's one like, of those okay. movies like, that got like, away with it, an so. example of a character change that I like is when they find the wishing well, yeah, and they go, "Oh, this is all the treasure," and they go, "Oh shit, no, it's just a well," and then Mouth picks up a coin. for the first time. He goes, "This is bullshit. I'm sick of this." And up until then, he's been kind of like, "Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. That's okay. Let's do it." And he and he's like, um. I'm yeah, this is back. I'm taking this back because this it's is mine. I'm taking this back and all the rest of it. my dream. And he dies and out of the water. Oh, okay. I don't know why he goes And then up. he doesn't do anything else. <laughs> um, but like that's a little moment at least that is that is kind of like he has a bit of a character moment. You know, he has a moment where he's like, I've been like this up until now, but now I'm going to change because I, it's not working. Mm. And I don't want to keep being naive or I don't want to keep being, you know, and that, that mm -hmm. kind of keeps coming up. Um, but uh, but what I guess what I found is what they kept doing is they'd encounter a situation like they get into the attic and 
Mikey's like, let's believe that treasure is real, basically. Yeah. And they go, yeah, we don't know, we don't know. And then he convinces them. And then they move to the next stage. And they go, he goes, oh, we should explore this thing. And they go, yeah, we're not really sure if treasure is real when they're in, like, uh, when they're uh, in the restaurant, the old restaurant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, no, we should keep trying. And then they go, yeah, okay, we believe you. And then they get under the restaurant and they go in the caves and they go and then they get to the wishing well or whatever and they go, this isn't real, this is dumb, we should give up. And he goes, no, we should keep going. And they go, okay, we believe you. And the same thing keeps happening over and over and over. And it doesn't, it doesn't, the biggest that extends is up to that point where he goes that this is our time speech. And that's really nice. Like, um, that, that definitely feels, you know, that has weight behind it. Yeah. It's like, that's kind of summing up the theme of the film and all these mm-hmm. other nice ideas. But that's just a bigger version of the stuff that's already happened. And then that same pattern keeps repeating until the end. Um, but, we, but we all like when you, when you grew up everyone had a friend that was kind of like Mikey that would sort of, of push you, you that would sort of tell you to do mm, things and about... you would continue so that's why I felt like I he was I was that friend okay but, I'm going to say that but, but it was one that was like let's go let's go further into the woods let's go further into the woods let's go further and everyone goes okay and then have their <laughs> oh, I'm just scared and... if, if for me in a well structured story each time he did that the stakes should be higher emotionally which they weren't um, or at least not. Well, I think they're getting there because yeah. there's a lot going on with yeah. Brandon that, that, and, and they obviously talk about because they're going to lose their... I mean, this is the only thing I, I slightly don't understand. They're obviously... The Goonies are going to lose their houses. Their houses, yeah. So the whole well, section's going to be demolished for a country that, I thought it was only going to be... Um, I thought it was only Mikey's house that was going to get yeah, destroyed. Yeah, wasn't the other no, same? I think, the few of them. Are, I think it's. I think there's a few of them, isn't I it? I think David, because whole... he's next door, and the whole thing's going to become oh. a country oh, yeah, club. So door, right. yeah. the risk for all of them to get there is not just save it for like Mikey and that, but it's to save for and everyone. And pressure on a kid okay. losing yeah. your okay. house. So you that, don't want to leave yeah. your childhood house. Oh, and can I just point out something that I noticed, which is that um, just just before they decide to go on their adventure, obviously storytelling wise, they're trying to build up their motivation, right? They're trying to show like. They've just gone outside and they've talked to the real estate guys and they're like, oh shit, the real estate guys are going, oh, you're when you're dead. I know you're where you're going. going Everything's safe. Yeah. And they come back inside and they're sitting around and Chunk's like, oh, I'm so depressed. And he's like putting whipped cream into his face. And then they do a shot where Mikey holds up the map and he goes, come, like, he's like, come on guys, we have to do this. And then it goes around to him and it shows, it, like the storm starts outside, they're all gathered mm. and that you just see their eyes over the top of the map. Yeah. yeah. And then that's Great when moment. he says... If we don't do something now, there's going to be a golf course here tomorrow. And that's ADR. That's voiceover that's chucked in after the fact that he didn't record on the day. And you yeah. can hear the difference in the sound quality. Yeah. And I think what's really interesting about that is to me that means that in that scene, they didn't think there was enough motivation. Because there's no other mention of a golf course. There's no other mention of if we don't do something today, things will change. And they went, oh, let's look at this scene. And like, they're annoyed, but the stakes aren't high enough. Like, we, we need to chuck something else in to make them go, guys, this is our last chance to solve our issue. Mm. And then I reckon they put that line in, and that's when they put the line in. They picked a great moment to put it in because they put it in right as the thunder claps. Yeah, and you can't see their mouths. And you can't see their mouths. Yeah. You know, all you see is the back of their heads and then, the, then their yeah. eyeballs. And I'm mm-hmm. like, whether or not they planned that, that was definitely ADR. I don't see, I don't see how I could be wrong about that. Oh, it's always possible, but uh, I'm fairly certain he doesn't say that live. And I just think it's really interesting that that was in the editing of that shot. They went, yeah, the, the stakes aren't high. Enough. It could have been mm-hmm. something slightly different, and it just, yeah, it, it could have been. A story arc that was different or something yeah, didn't work, and they went, they "Oh, a golf club's kind of something everyone can understand yeah. very quickly." And it's and kind I just of like he sums up eighties. Just the fact that he sums up <clears> their <throat> entire situation and their entire dilemma in one line. Mm. Yeah, I think is it's not only good storytelling, but it's telling of the looseness of the other storytelling yeah. that they suddenly needed to tie it all up in one line. But that wasn't the scene I was that you were talking I feel about. Like that that, that wasn't the a scene. Lot with my work, the scene I was thinking about <laughs> was the scene when Mike, they all go upstairs and and Mikey leans over the balcony and he's looking at the ocean and that and he's quite sad and and Brand and that go inside and then Brand comes goes out the back door and comes around and yeah. hugs him because he yeah. doesn't want to do it in front of the other guys uh-huh. and they're having a hugging moment because it's like this is the end if we don't do something. Mm-hmm. But yeah. um, I, I do that kind of sets Mikey up for me because sure. he is on his emotional journey and you but know he's yes. the lead, See, he's he's the leader. and I agree yes I totally he, he's agree got, he, the stakes are high for him and he knows it's the last ditch like if they don't do this it's all over now the one thing I want to discuss about Mikey which has become and I, I still don't know where it starts in the script but it's interesting is he starts speaking to one-eyed Willie as if he's having a conversation mm. with him yeah as if they're in like a like a, yeah. like, as if a Willie's giving him a challenge yeah, he's like, yeah. and, and I, that's probably the most off-putting thing for me that's slightly because just... he was such a baddie when I Willie yeah, he but, killed but, but his what, entire crew yeah, but what get... stage does he have that discussion Agreed. at the start is it when yeah. he's in the attic and he says are you trying to tell us something because no, he keeps saying his when, dad and... tells him the story as a kid and he goes you sound just as Bran says you sound just as cheesy as dad telling that story Okay. so his dad's filled his head with this one-eyed Willie story but in terms of our watching of this story 
I think Do that's you it. When it happened? I think that's it. I think that we're supposed to but get that's it. That's not from that. the first time he speaks to one on Willie. There's mm. one where they're down in the. It must oh, be he down says, the Willie, come ooh, on. Ooh, what are yeah. you trying to say to us? Yes, it's when he. It's when. So to me, that represents when he's he's ignoring his friends. Yes. Because that's the part where he stops paying attention to his friends and he just believes what he believes and just goes, no, regardless of what my friends say and their doubt, I'm going to push forward. And I think that's when he asks to go to the bathroom. When they're in the restaurant and he asks to go to the bathroom yeah. and she goes, yeah, fine. And then he goes, oh, oh, oh. And then you're like, oh, wait, he's just pretending to be a scared kid. And he pulls the map out and goes, all right, Willie, what have you got for me kind of thing? And he says, I think, mm. what you just said, Jane. Um, it's like a, to me, it's like a child's mind shattering. I feel like it's, it's kind of like he's... Kind of. Because it's, it's only towards the end when they find Willie and, and he's talking to him that the others kind of look at him and go... What the F? Yeah, we've been it's just his dad has filled yeah. him yeah. every night bedtime stories with this story about yeah, when true. I, this is, I, I, get, I think Ryan's talking about the fact that he's no longer listening to reason. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So this reason right represents the thing yeah. where he's like, but it's in a way that the movie celebrates. Mm. I know. The movie's like, it, yay, he's believing in himself. But, but I think that... As if, as if going crazy and believing in yourself are, might be the same thing. But I think that is a comment about the way he's been brought up and the way his parents, like that you know... optimistic Yeah, kind of, that kind yeah. of... And I think that uh, that little snippet, which I never really noticed as a kid, about his dad telling him the story over yeah. and over again and then yeah. him retelling it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's setting us up for that moment that he speaks to Willie and, and, throughout all... Throughout yeah. The, yeah. And it certainly makes... It certainly connects that he would want to chase down... Like, just symbolically, he was going to be chasing down Willie in order to... Uh, Willie isn't really awkward. Bad guy, a, by the way. One-eyed Willie, too. Yeah, Let's exactly. See. <laughs> one-eyed. I know that uh, that's come one-eyed. on. One-eyed. Um, there's an I in-joke mean, there. And you know, <laughs> totally. it is. It's terrible. Totally. It's totally. with one-eyed serpent. Um, <laughs> it's just gone. Right? Yes, um, he's away from like, me. <laughs> Get the lollies away. Sour worms. <laughs> um, I need those sour worms. Mm. But, yeah, the fact, that, the fact that it's a story that his dad has told him that he's... And then he's, like... But his dad's literal heard world, from someone. Trying, but in the literal world, he's trying to save his dad. Is his dad a curator in a museum? In the literal world, the only so, time you see his dad at the start is he's pulling a flag down from someone who waves at him, which really to strange. me doesn't make much Mikey sense. Mikey mentions but, it though. He says he's, when he's curating the museum, I'm sure he does at the yeah, start. Yeah, well, I think Brand says something as well because it's about him working mm. long hours oh, yeah, yeah. or so something. So he's like the museum because that's why because that's why his Brand is looking after Mikey, isn't it? Because his yeah. dad's working longer hours and he's yeah, not available. So it's something to do with that. So Brand becomes basically his parent. So, yeah, and because and, uh, I think the reason uh, I would identify that the, the point where um, Mikey starts talking to one on Willie as the point where he takes on, he decides to f- save his dad. Mm. Because the thing is that his dad can't pay the bills to save the house. So mm. his dad is failing as a provider, as a man, as a whatever. And so he's like, oh, I don't want my dad to have to feel that way. There's a couple of lines where he says, I don't want my dad to have to... So maybe so he looks up so to Willie because Willie is maybe kind he's of possessed by his ghost. But let's let's, let's sort of just put our little side thing here. I just just sort of this then. They don't have any money, but they're getting a house made. That's what I said to Aaron. She has a broken arm. The mum. So she's just got someone helping. Okay. her. Okay. I think that's it's still going to cost you money, right? Like, well, you're I don't running think out of I, said cash. This, I said, how do they afford a, afford a housekeeper? And they thought, oh, maybe it's a, a favour from a. Neighbor. Is, is is did the actress break her arm and then they put a shoe horned it in there, or is it part of the script that the mum has broken up? Because it seems quite strange. It is an odd one. It's I very like strange. It. If it's not basically, if there isn't a reason for something to be in the film, then I don't like it. Yeah, I just it's, anyway, it's just that was just <laughs> but the why don't you like it? Because yes, it shows, good question. Because good it shows question. A, that's very good. Because it's it shows a lack end. of intention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it shows a lack of purpose and lack of intention, which represents a wasting of my time. Do you think well, they shouldn't have bothered and just stayed at home and not written Goonies? Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just having. Mikey just, Mikey just gave up and they went. Back they to should have asked me when I was one years old <laughs> what I thought. I reckon no, the reason no, the it's... housemates in it is just so they could run jokes with yes, mouth. Definitely. Because mouth has to be able to speak Spanish and, so he yes, can read the map. Exactly. Very so good. That's, yeah. that's so what they that were is. just they were setting up his character. Yeah. That was all. That's all. It's like how can we show that mouth? Which is exactly how I wrote my pitch. I just kept backtracking and adding. And see, that's fine. It's totally fine. And as far as writing and like how I see critiquing it, totally fine to chuck um, uh, <laughs> totally fine to chuck in that scene that yeah. whole character to justify so that we can have mouth show, show off his skills yeah. in one way and then later talk that about would, heroin like that, later do it responsibly like later yeah. on he's using it to help instead of to hinder but what they should have done is they should have given the they should have um, built her presence 
uh, the, the maid's presence there into the story in a way that made sense for the rest of the physical plot, not just the emotional plot that they needed for his character. She appears at the end. She bookends. I don't know why she appears at the end and she what the yeah. gag is. Because she's really gem. good with clothes. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And so there's no reason why she would find to, it. to Mary and <laughs> so empties She finds the, a little bag, yeah. the marble bag. That's and that right. saves the, the goon dogs. Oh, see, there um, you go. There's a, so that's not, to get, right. my, not yeah. to get on my criticism train, but I have shoehorn a minute. But I have a page of notes just about kind of questiony things that I had. They're not criticism. They're just kind of like, oh, this is a weird thing that I noticed. So... There's a kind of there's a series of eighties like faulty eighties logic like, that I just wanted to ask you guys what you thought about because we're from the eighties obviously like, oh, they, no, they didn't like, like the generation in, in these in these movies there are there is this kind of like I guess I didn't realize this movie had yes. this kind of thing in it so the Fire fact away. that Bran can't escape from some springy string from oh metal come on that's just a up. bit of schmaltz and fun that's what I mean so that and that's okay like, but he I'm also fell back and him. had his arms pinned under the couch. They tied yeah, him but, but he could like. Also, those stretchy things pinch the crap out. Yeah, that's of true. He would have been losing hairs out of his arm. Yeah. And then imagine? my next question is, why didn't he just pump his tires back up? Because it would have taken too long. Because he thinks they popped them. Because he says they popped my new tires. So he thinks they've yeah, actually like, punctured them. But, but you could check. Like, <laughs> he doesn't have time. He's he doesn't got, have time. He's got his brother's ass. There's a little girl there with a bike that's just fitting. He grabs the little girl. He says thanks a lot. and Takes off. That'll do. Okay. And then the next one I thought comedy gold. The next one I thought of was um how the hell did they forget Chunk in the cold room? Where's Chunk? Yeah, they, even for like six minutes and yeah, move on. There's so they're many like, oh, of shit, them, isn't there? That they're packing... There's only seven of them. Yeah, but think <laughs> like, when you're trying to escape and you're all packing yourself down that fireplace because that's yeah. when they notice he's in there. You go, yeah. Ryan. You stick up for I our movie. I am standing up. Yeah. Yeah. God yeah. damn it. There. I'm, I'm feeling I'm, on the other side here. No, Actually, I appreciate this is, Jane and I are on one side of the yeah. table and uh, Kristen is on the other side. And <laughs> it it's makes just, sense. It's just, you know, it's two 80s fans here. Yeah. Versus, you know, one of those naysayers. I'm vilifying myself. I'm making myself the villain. So later on when I... When I explain and try to reason why I haven't done all my pictures, <laughs> I can oh, explain. Well, I'm the victim that's here. That's right. Yeah. He's, he's, oh. Everyone's oh, always picking on Christian. Shame, right? yeah. So it's all planned. So, no, so that, that would have been just because they stuffed themselves down that small hole and then they, they, they do sort of say something and they look and he's they doing do, it on he the realizes, window. Yeah. It's a long scene before and they see it. And they tell him to go get the cops. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So, but they should have said also, something with it. Also, there is no explanation given for how the hell Chunk gets out. Of what? Of the freezer. Of the freezer. Because he's got, guys, get me out, get me out, get me out. And then later he can just get out. Like, nobody helps him out. He doesn't suddenly discover that their lock's not broken. But at the beginning of the scene, he's like, bang, 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 banging on the door and can't get out and the dead body's leaning on him. I think it's all And then two or three minutes later... Exactly. I two or three they, minutes later, allowed once the bad to... guys have gone out, he goes, oh, phew. It's almost as if once he can move the body out of the way, the door's Come on, that dead body's falling on top of him. Did yeah, I just say that scene? The camera's open. It's <laughs> yeah. gross. But why does the body keep falling towards him? Why does he push it sideways towards because the camera? Because the camera's right there. Okay, oh, okay, I, sorry. Can I just say that the, the <laughs> scene where he pushes the body back and he goes, stay, stay, is just so well acted and so great. And the face expression of the dead guy. And see, I think, I think I am just kind of questioning, is this, this is just like that 80s logic, right? Because because there is movies of the 80s and 90s that just have this logic, and it's like movie logic. Where it's come like, on, what you've never been in a freezer them... with a dead body before? Come I mean, on, Christian. Not as often I'm, when as you're I'm a child. Like, in a comical life, <laughs> but like but like that kind of yeah suspension of disbelief where we just go, oh no, yeah. like we're, we're having it's so charming, it's, yeah. we're having so much fun with this that that we're not going to question those pretty obvious gaps in in kind yeah. Of I think logic yes. Let's let's cool. Yeah. No, I'm just kind of curious about it. <clears throat> curious about it. Um. Yes. And then <laughs> I wrote. Um, how horrible it was that the bad guys, that full-grown adults, choke a child before yes. threatening to mutilate his hand. That's yeah, but, just but that shows how villainous they are. Mm, of they're, course, they're not even but nice I just couldn't them. believe it was in a PG film. Oh, that's, that's so, that's, that's, so that's hard the other to one watch. I forgot. It's not PG that's anymore, the one when I brain it? froze before that I forgot. It's still PG. It's still PG. Yes. Mild Jeez. course language, mild horror, mild violence. When I brain froze I before, before that I forgot, the yeah. film starts with one of the brothers hanging yeah. on a noose in a prison cell. If that's not a hell of a scary that's right. start to a film, that's she's right. dead. He, he pretends to be dead. As a kid, you, you see someone hanging and they're dead in mm. a prison cell because you see Horrendous. his feet first. Yep. That's a bad start to a film. Steven Obviously, he tricks him, but so intense. has dark stuff. He Screw produced, you, Stephen. He produces yeah. dark work. Anyway, it is. So, I don't like... He's almost like, I, I went through shit as a kid. You can too. Yeah. But, but I think the fact that we see how mean and, and evil those guys are when oh, they definitely. get belted up by sloth and that, yes. we like it, we think it's mm. funnier. And I just think it's so... I just don't know how... I, I couldn't film that, having some adult choke a child. It's no. just, in a kid's film. The mum dropped so the baby difficult. on its head a couple of times. Yeah, that that's where reference. you draw the line? That was a reference. Okay. Okay. You didn't see it happen. I know, you know but it's very different. It's still dark as hell. And it's chunky. He's so scared. You know, He's not one of the braver kids to start with and he goes through the worst. But hang on. Like, hang on, hang on. Well, just having said that, even though you said Chunk is the guy, <laughs> there is a scene where the shit's gone down, he's seen a dead body, 
He's nearly had his hand torn off or mutilated. And they're arguing, and Chunk slides between their legs and is eating ice cream with a that's, smile on his yeah. face. What the fuck well, is see, going on there? And that's, then that's, he that's a bit later on where they like him, where they're starting to I'm like starting him, to where he's like, like this telling kid a story about like how, how, how he accidentally he, he pretended to vomit in a theatre and made everybody vomit in the theatre. Kid's gonna <laughs> feed you. <a> <laughs> <laughs> and I kept making these lies. That's right. Like, and just and I never felt, I've never felt so bad in my life. And there's me, there's me and Jane in the theatre, both both snickering, but both Jane and I are nervously laughing in the stand while he's making people throw up that's kind of what would happen in that scenario oh my god oh, I'd be laughing my uh, head off um, I have got a good story about that I'll tell you guys one day but vomiting uh... something that I was very surprised by was the bad the bad special effects of the bats yeah they were bad oh, they are just hanging terrible. in front of like well yeah it looked like the, like uh, they were muppet the string... sticks like you know the, the stick they were wobbling kind of, yeah. and they were just wobbling and like yeah. the acting was good though like they were genuinely seemed scared but I was just like oh like I'm I'm sort of surprised at myself that mm. I'm noticing that the bats are quite bad. They're just like literally They're just like literally slapping. Mm. It's um, like a paper soldier's sort of, you yeah. know, paper people coming out of that hole just dragged out bats faster. <laughs> just look scared for 10 minutes. Oh, and then um, uh, Data, the way Data gets saved by the teeth. The teeth are ridiculous. It's so ridiculous where one. he goes, and he shoots teeth up. Teeth with and a slinky, from, I will da, say. Da, da, the, the pincers da, da, of power, da, da, as he calls them. Da, da, which is, you know, a very sweet, very sweet um idea. But what that, when that supports his whole body weight. Pictures of hell. Pictures of hell. Come Wait, on. Those teeth also that. bite one of the brothers on the testicles as well. So yeah. if it's going to do damage to the testicles, I'm sure it can hang on to whatever it was, a stalagmite Isn't or whatever it grabs that what the booby trap is called? Pictures of booby hell? Booby trap. Yeah, booby, or booty trap. Booby trap. Booty trap. Booty trap. Booty trap. Um, oh, okay. he would have done, Actually, let's not forget that if he hadn't done that, he would have been skewered. Because the blades at the bottom of that of hole are... He would have been skewered, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's another thing. A brutal death to a child. They're oh called gosh. pictures of hell. That's, that's, so that's it's the also, I also oh, think it's ridiculous that when they kiss, even though the kiss was my favourite scene as a child, yeah. mm, when the two kids go. kiss, I was like, how could she not tell that was Bran right away? And at the end of the scene, she goes, oh, I think you was standing in a hole. With that's... my eyes closed. <laughs> See, with her eyes closed. Yeah, but she, why would she, why would she assume she There was she a goes, waterfall there. They, she, she they was holding on to that. She says, remember? They, she don't, was... they don't forget a thing. Remember she said, she be said she careful, there's a hole, a hole here. I know, I, think I know. <laughs> but that's after the facts, right? So that's one thing. But she would have held on to him. She held on to his body. Mm. She would have felt his body. But Steph stitches it up. She knows it's Mikey going in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah she totally does. So what... What's wrong with her? Next time, do it with your eyes <laughs> open. So. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What a great yeah. friend. Yeah. Send in the young brother. Yeah, That's right. going to stuff Steph's it all up. It's actually down the real, like, you know, at times. Like, in, well, oh. we're going to talk about deleted scenes. She's a bit oh, of yes. a pitch. But um, right. she does something in the one of the deleted scenes that I just can't. Mm. Can't get. Can't oh, well, I'm interested. Mm. I'm interested. Mm. It's a little bit rough. Okay, right, so I've the kissing scene we don't like. One or two a little more. Um... Uh, I feel like I'm tearing into a film I love here. I'm going through all no, the no, stuff no, that you've written. These are just kind of questions. These aren't massive questions. Destroying it for us. <laughs> um, so this is really small. This is really small and finicky. Mm-hmm. Goonies never said But die. it's really small, and so I don't get why they couldn't change it okay. and make it correct. Okay. Um, the musical notes on the piano. Yes. Um, she goes. There's so there's so she looks at the notes and she goes, "Oh, we have to play these notes." And then she doesn't play notes. She plays chords, and there's only three chords. On, the, on all the musical notes, I just scoffed on, on my all drink the pa- because on the, on the only whole page, Christian would know that. There's what? like, there's like, there's like maybe uh, ten bars of sheet music, yeah. and there's three chords, and she plays about six chords, and there's only three chords written on the sheet music. That's one thing, really easy to change. Another thing, is she goes, hang on, hang on, hang on. Notes. Those keys are skeleton fingers, so it's a bit different, yeah, isn't it? Of course, a bit the terrifying. Music, the music notes, are, the the, oh. music, the sheet music is is just wrong for Still what they're be doing. Scary. But that isn't even the biggest thing. At one point, she goes. I can't, she got, she's getting nervous and they're criticizing. She's like, I'm trying to do it. They're trying to believe in her. And she goes, I can't tell if it's an A sharp or a B flat. An A sharp and B flat are the same thing. Oh, and everybody yeah. who plays music knows that. Well, they are well, exactly. Well. I can point to it on my keyboard. He is pointing. He just pointed to his keyboard. He did. A, a, a B flat and an A sharp are exactly the same note, and there is no reason she needed well, to say you've that. And just so completely a couple wrong. Of musical idiots. She's right. so completely wrong. Well, when we're exactly stuck in a cave, yeah. and we're going to play a piano play the fingers, yep. make sure that it's, we know. It's, yes, it's just unnecessarily. Maybe music was different in the 1600s, but it probably <laughs> wasn't because true. it was actually created. Maybe. One eyed Willie was one twisted mother. Yeah. You know, like. Oh, that's right. Okay. So just talking about um, the the ending and the little tying off the ends, that yeah. I was like, this is a bit nothing. When um, when Mikey um, he, he's he's uh, talking to Andy and she's like, oh look, you're he's like kind of a bit sad that he's like he got to kiss her but nothing's gonna happen kind of thing. And she's yeah. like, look, what, you're, you're a great little kid or whatever, you're a great dude, and just wait till the rest of you works as well as your kissing does, and oh. you'll be great. Oh, and then he goes, "Oh, thanks. That's really nice." Oh, and then, gross. and then Brandon, yeah. who like just kiss right in front of him, and just mo- like like really like lavish all over each other. And then he, Mikey pulls out his puffer and goes, 
uh, who needs it and throws, throws it away. That, that <laughs> throws like, away his yeah, What? You so need it. Because a girl believed in you, you don't have us for anymore. Yeah, so that's Mike, about Mikey, it. Mikey died tragically two years just later from yeah, because he I, just like his papa. I great. took it as <clears> he, if he survived the um, what he'd just been through. Yeah, yeah. That, but yeah. And fair enough. But, but it's like... Yeah, I yeah, always wondered kind of like, why I don't sit there, I, and, and when I'm looking at these things, I don't sit there going, that's bullshit. I sit there going, oh, come on, guys. Like, you could have done a little bit better uh, than that. I do, do that, that I mean? with like, films, Come on, guys. It's, like, not, it's, not, it's not Eddie from It where it's only water. He actually <laughs> needs it to survive. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. It's not a placebo. Your it's only water. Will, let's, your let's, airways yeah, will. Yeah, let's also point out that that kind of weird is the fact that Brant and Andy start making out in front of the parents. Now, yeah, oh, my God, God I would not, I would never do that. I don't give a shit if we'd got through that ship and those crooks. I would never kiss a girl in front of my parents like that. Why? Brad's mum says, "Oh, let her mum worry." Yeah, that's right. Yeah, or let her t- dad worry. Oh, you'll be worrying about so, it too. Geez. You see, you'll yeah. have a little goonie it's coming just, along. But that's all. That's all. That, that's all the mild criticisms I had. I just wanted to ask. Well, about. I feel like I've just butchered the film. I love. Yeah, he's same. It, he's, he's Mikey. He's taking us down into the. Okay, forest. well, let's talk about our favourite moments then. Okay, all right. All right. Let me. I mean, I'm. It's a quoting. It's a quota's dream. Yes. I, I use these quotes in everyday life. <laughs> like the come on all the time when, yeah. when hey, my child won't get out of the house. I didn't know how you guys were from this movie. Didn't you? This movie. No. It was only just Every time it. I go over to someone's house, hey, you guys. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was from print, um, print of the... Um, Did you? I um, thought it was from many times. Oh. Ah. Wow. But okay. I knew that's because they were making fun of this movie because there's a part where he goes, hey, you guys. Jerk alert, always. Jerk, Jerk alert. alert. Um, a lot of chunk and mouth. I'm going to Quotes. start using jerk Doesn't alert jerk again. Alert, oh. Does jerk oh, alert one. mean... Jerk alert. Yeah, but like... There's a jerk... Do they mean... Yeah, but why does he... Is a jerk somebody who he actually thinks is a bad person? Or he's just teasing them? Well, there's a jerk in the teasing. area. There's a shit no, someone being a jerk. But Sorry. like in terms of the definition of jerk, like... Because now the modern version of jerk is like somebody who's intentionally mean and like not a nice person. But does he think that's what chunk is? He's or mean. Is just... He bullies... He bullies... Oh, that's he what I'm being called all the time chunk. now. Yeah. Now I know what a jerk means. Yeah. I but like back lot. in the day, like I guess I'm just asking, did the yeah. word jerk mean something else? Where back then jerk means like some kind of loser. As opposed to, because now a jerk isn't a loser. A jerk is somebody who's intentionally aggressive and kind of mean to you. I feel like you can be a jerk, but, jerk but you're not just necessarily like a, a jerk. Would be a jerk. Like a shit stirrer, I would yeah, say. You're being, you're being a jerk. You're being a shit stirrer. You're being someone that's getting in the but way. But that's what he calls chunk. And chunk isn't that. No, no. but he's... Chunk is, a, is he's you know, quote unquote, a loser or a dork. He's, he's not a, a bully. jerk. That's, he's a, that's he's Ralph. a dork or a... Ralphie, mouthy. Ma- Ralph. Did I say Ralph? It's Sorry. It's Ralph the... No, it's Clark. Clark, it Clark. is true. Ralph Where's is Ralph from Happy Mountain? Days. Oh, that's, that's Happy Days. Happy... God. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. Happy no, that was me. I did that. You derailed me. I liked Ralph. it. I like Ralph. Okay, favourite scenes. So we, so... Yeah, favourite scenes. Uh, oh, go favourite scene. Uh, well, Absolutely you favourite. You, you were going up first. Mm. Other than cool, cool dialogue. I think I like when they first embark. Like the... Yeah. F- actually, the attic, the map. The one yeah, I really cool. story. Yeah. Oh. When it begins, the beginning of, of the actual... The mouse sticks his Adventure. tongue through the painting, which is quite funny. <laughs> yeah, which that. is very funny. Yeah. Is, it did like, always well, bother well, me, though. Did he wreck an ancient painting? Probably. What yeah, a probably. Joke I think the hole was already there. I think the hole was already there. Okay. No, I'd imagine mouth That's made a that. <laughs> That's a mouth thing to do. He's a real... You're ruining the painting! That's right. <laughs> You're ruining my show! Sorry, guys, I really quote I, I would say... I would say... A chunk just steals every scene that he's in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there is... Like that scene, in, like I said, in the freezer where he's... Talk, talks that dead body cracks me up. He just lost it when he's like, "Stay, stay." Like, I just lost it because it just makes no sense. But also, um, when they joke with him and they're like, "Yeah, why don't we just put what is it, chocolate on the floor and let Chunk eat his way through or something?" And just stuff like that. I have naked pictures of your mum. Here's another bad That's one. That's right. And then he smashes through smashes the door. Smashes through the door, yeah, yeah. which is all mouth versus Chunk all stuff. Mouth. So yeah. very funny sort of stuff. Um, I, I love the I love the bad guys. I like all the bad guys. Which I mean, they're great. so funny. Yeah. They're they so. Had their own- Spin off. Well, slapping each other on the head, and when they walk across the log, and one of them falls and crosses. I do like. I do like when Chunk thinks he's found a car that can help him. And yes, that, that's cool. When they just they, they, they start they singing, turn the light on. Yeah, that's that singing, cool. That's yeah. like you a nice little twist. You may have heard of these people. Yeah, disgusting people. And then he starts singing. <laughs> no, the light comes on. You see in the rearview <laughs> mirror. Yeah, and then he's in the great. background wrestling with Chunk, <laughs> and he's like, "How long does it take you to get a kid in the back?" And you see Chunk put his head up. Yeah, brilliantly acting. So I would just say anything with Chunk. Just, just such. He's such the a star good of the show. Oh, I just laughed <laughs> at the same stuff again last night. Me too. Um, I hope it's not a deposit bottle. I hope it's not a deposit bottle. I love that he cares. Yeah. 
that they can't get a deposit on that. Like I love it. Peeing it's in our great. faces or whatever when he breaks the penis off the Whenever statue. I smash a glass at home, yeah. I say, I hope it's not a deposit. That's not a deposit that line. I laughed. Yeah. I laughed out loud at that yeah. one. Yeah. He's going to be pissing in his own face. Pissing in his own face. Yeah. But when also Chunk's trying Gun. to hide it from the mum, he keeps like leaning. Every time yeah. you see him in the background, he's moving the statue. It's just, just, I know. It's that's Mum's favourite like, part. I like that as great well. Great acting by that. Sean yeah. Aston, that great, great. That's Mum's favourite part. Yeah, that and and I think... Like, if you looked at it from sort of the 80s, like, set-wise and that, that ship and that, fantastic. They rebuilt that ship. Yeah, like, yeah. it's so good. Like, well, and and such ship. a great setup to get there, and the payoff's mm. massive, and it looks fantastic. Mm. Obviously, a big soundstage. Mm-hmm. Really well done. So, yeah. Yeah. as the a kid, you're like, awesome. wow, that's the pirate ship, and you get there, and you're watching it. You're so invested in it when you're younger, when I yeah. watched it. Even yeah. the older you're watching it, I mean, that stands up. Yeah. That's really Imagine good set Imagine it design. as a theme park. It I was disappointed great. and a bit sad. Uh, like, I was totally, like, I'm, like, being from a supporter, like, being in the film and being you know keen about it that Chunk doesn't go on most of the adventure with them yeah same you know what I mean like he gets pulled away and has to earn his stripes versing the bad guys mm-hmm. and then doesn't come back till the end yeah, but, yeah but, but that's what's good about like, it sad that he didn't get to yeah, be part yeah, of they asked but... him in a, an interview hmm. not long after it was shot and he did get to go down the slide Okay. I did wonder about the, I was like that's yeah, really they let him really go fun. on the slide the rest of the actors have moved on they, the lights were turned off I did wonder how they GoPro that scene though because GoPros didn't exist back then mm. like, so you get the kids on really good like really still shots of them being completely manic and going down the slides have... like that's a really good but let's setup. just let's, when I looked at it he would have wrapped up a, an old camera <laughs> and, and camera. stuck it to yeah, their feet or just like just Steven Spielberg sitting on a rig yeah just Spielberg going down there come on guys let's do it no if you look at it closely because it goes on quite long that slide scene it's the same slide just looped because the yeah. bush, yeah. if you look, the trees are the same. So it's oh. like, let's just keep looping that yeah, same yeah. shot. Okay. And there's one of them, I think it's Steph, who everyone seems to be going down and normal. She's, like, she's completely she's out of control. Really which is just, somebody who's intentionally yeah, which is Steph, themselves. which is brilliant. Yeah. But she's going on the back like a, like yeah. a, a that beetle. That me yeah. on any Adventure yeah. World slide <laughs> as a child. And I, I was always out of control. I was that person. <laughs> My only thing is when they come out of the slides at the end all together, I was like, mm. they is that being edited? Because they, they, it didn't look real. Is no. it different entrances? I yeah, but when I looked, I was like, they... Is that being shot in a studio and edited in? Because it doesn't look right the way they're coming. Yeah, what do you mean edited in? Like it's um, like they've done the, the the still shot of the slides, and then they've got the actors on ropes and stuff, and then they've um, edited them in some sort of you know computer. Oh, do you mean do you mean as in they've <coughs> composited yes. different shots of them and, and like mushed them together into one single frame? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, kind to make of. them all exit. Because I just thought it was a slide that just had four different. Things. I know, but it's just there was one of them was like something weird about it. Look it weird, did look like they're weird. coming out of that weird. Yeah, the way they form. Like maybe yeah. that's been shot separately. The yeah. Falling out of the slides, yeah, they've sure. shot the slides as a as a wide, and mm. then they've shot all the individuals of them falling out, and they've just oh, composed know, them all in, yeah, okay. just because yeah, for timing and also the it way they look come like, out looking, because yeah. they're all sort of flapping their arms and they look slightly. And I guess different. maybe you might have noticed them float weirdly or something as they fell into the just, water. Yeah, the way the, the water landed, and uh, okay. I might be wrong. It's just you know, no, that's that. I don't yeah. want to ruin the magic for the peeps out no, there. No, no, well, I've already You've done killed that. They're going to go back and watch it. He's right, that bastard. That bastard ruining all. I'd probably say my favourite scene is probably still the kissing scene. Okay, just because. Like, well, we know why now. You're... Yeah, no, no. But well, like I've always been such a romantic. <laughs> like, as a little, as a little kid, like as a little boy, um, especially kind of got ten, eleven, twelve. I just love the idea of like going. Oh, I'm too young to have a girlfriend. Girls don't like me because I'm too young. Mm. But that's okay, I guess, because I'm not really, I'm not really into that stuff yet. And then feeling like. Um, feeling like Mikey in that regard and then him accidentally getting a nice kiss from an older woman <laughs> it's just like oh that's really sweet She's I wish that would happen to me his brother's girlfriend it's so, weird and awkward but that probably makes, only two years awkward? older yeah. how is it awkward <laughs> Because then he's going to see his brother and he's like, you kissed my woman. Like, you know, it's going to, it's no, it's like, she Mikey, kissed me, That man. little, no. he gets but like, Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that idea of like, oh, oh, that's a moment. Then just in that sequence when you were talking about, when you talk about character development, okay. they go, that's the, that's the girl's room and that's the boy's room. And then Brand goes, I'm going into the men's toilet mm-hmm. and all the all others the go toilet. and join him. There's but a moment for how you. How is that character development? What do well, you because they've all decided that it's time to grow up. Like they don't want to be classed as little boys. But anymore. that's what the story is through the whole thing. At the beginning, they're like, um, Mikey's like, let's believe in adventure and be childlike because we shouldn't give up on these things. And they go, now we're going to give up on it. We're going to grow up. And then they get to the next stage, and he goes, "Come on, guys, we it's it's not real guns. We're not really under threat. We can survive. We want to really help us." And they go, "No, we need to be grown us about this. This is real guns, and there's danger." And then they believe him. So that's just that is a character moment, but it's the same thing. But Mike is the one who's like they all leave. Mike is the last one to go as well. So all the others sort the of yeah. So they all sort of head. They're like, "Yeah, we're going to follow Brand." He's like later, and they sort of go, and Mike yeah. is kind of like, "Yeah," and then he goes in there. And I mean, I guess maybe that's why I like that's why I like the kissing bit because he gets to do a grown up thing. 
Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, so that's a character moment, I guess, for me. But he's but, just come out of the job. But yes, no, I agree. I agree. And because he can pee the fastest, like, why, why did he get to leave? He first? was the last one. They're in all there, just standing, and he's like, "Go see what she wants." I'm oh, like, no, that, Brand, you deserve go see what for your for your about. girlfriend to get kissed by another dude because you do not care exactly. if she's okay. Like, I was concerned that the waterfall in the background was then pissing because it might. <laughs> and, <that's, laughs> and like the fact that Mikey's like. Oh, Andy, um, I mean, it's slightly condescending, but he's like, oh, Andy, it gets a bit dangerous here. You might want to hold my hand. And she goes, oh, thanks. And they hold hands. I was like, like, part of me was like, she should be with him. Like, he's so much kinder to her yeah. than Brand is. Brand is. I did play with that concept uh-huh. a little bit, but I, I didn't. probably only two years apart. I, I didn't put it in there. Well, I changed no, I my thought, opinion. I thought she was, they're 16. The Brand and, mm. yeah. Because like, he would only joke... be, wouldn't he be 12, 13? I'd say he's 12, yeah. So they're not, yeah. you know, so four years it's not back. crazy, but no, still. of course it's not crazy. Mm. No, no, especially in a couple more years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but um, hmm, interesting. All right, well, should we? Yes. Should we finalize our our scores? Oh gosh. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hard. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to figure it out. <laughs> Unless there's any, any more point, points you guys want to talk about? No, I don't think. Although, uh, although we are leading into we are leading into watching the um, was it that yes. outtakes. So we're gonna we're gonna live on the podcast as as per um, Ryan's suggestion, which is a fantastic suggestion. We're gonna listen and we're gonna watch the uh, it's about five or six minutes of on the on the it's the twenty fifth um, anniversary uh, edition of the DVD, and there's about six minutes of what is listed on the DVD as outtakes, but they're basically deleted scenes. Uh, so we're gonna watch and describe and commentate on them. Yes, uh, shortly. Do you want to give your scores before that? Well, no, I was just going to say, leading into that, before we do that, because there's the one thing, I don't think we've mentioned it, is Mm. that, and and leads into the outtakes, is the fact that Data says at the end, Mm. the octopus. He mentions that the the octopus was very, very scary or something like that. And I've watched that film, and I never understood that as a kid. I was like, what octopus? What the hell are they talking about? I I caught wind, because somebody actually started, I heard it somewhere in the pipeline, so it must have leaked from, you know, back in the 80s, however that happened. Mm. And then we didn't know if it was... Yes. A deleted scene, but yeah. then. But yeah. now we know the truth. It's we actually truth. been presented, and we are going to watch it soon. So, mm-hmm. soon. so that's what I'm going to add. So, if anyone's seen the movie Goonies and mm-hmm. sees that line from Data, mm-hmm. we are now going to watch the scene that's been removed mm-hmm. and describe it and see whether it's relevant to even have been in yeah. there. Totally because strange. that that is very jarring. The fact that Data says it's that very strange, yeah. because it doesn't make. They've gone through this massive adventure, and the one thing he it's says is not actually in it. it in. Yeah, they've left it in. I think my, is because you know they they. He's making it up and making it sound like they were in a lot more danger than they were. That's what I thought. Whereas yeah. they were, because there were murderers in there with them. As a kid, I just thought, well, I do remember that line very, very vaguely. Remember that, and just going like, I guess I wasn't paying attention during that part. Yeah, that's and that's what. Yeah, yeah. the like, only that thing that cool. gets me in it is I think Chunk agrees with him, so that's where yeah. I was confused. It's like, yeah, the octopus. Well, I reckon it's because, <laughs> so I reckon it's like, because the shot was so good because that's just one of the first lines because they're talking to the media, yeah, yeah, and I think the rest of the, the shot was so good. They're like, yeah. well, we can't really cap it, and they can't edit it because it's all feeds into the next because everyone's talking mm. over yeah, the top of each sure. other, kind of like we do on the podcast. Yeah, and uh, they don't want to basically edit it. Yeah, out. they just left. So they went, we have to leave it in, but in leaving it in. It it is jarring. Oh. It is jarring. Yeah, yeah. And now we're going to find out. Did they why. do it on purpose? Did well, they not? how about we move over to the couch? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, we can do, we didn't do scores. I thought oh. you wanted to do that. First. Okay. All right. We no, can cut that do that. Out. That's up to you. Do you want to do score? We can do scores now. No, it's up to you. Uh-huh. All right. Let's go over to right. that, and we'll come back and finish the um the talky bit. Going to bring our table over. Well, I'm going in blind because I haven't seen I was doing any of this. Only an hour ago. Okay. okay so right. scooters, scooters. So Jane's seen it. Only the only. Christian's seen a couple. But apparently there's some more stuff here. Oh, so you haven't seen them all? All right, no. I've seen none of yeah, them. Yeah, there's about six minutes, um, and the octopus is like one of the... The, the, the thing that addresses that old. issue oh, well, is, the, is the end of it. Okay, so we're going to be talking through the deleted scenes, uh, or the outtakes, as they class them. I class an outtake as like a comedy show. All right. So there's a bunch of guys riding up to a shop, a deli. Wow. Mad Magazine. Mad. We like Very... that reference. So this is when the Goonies haven't... They, they've just left the... Oh, they've just escaped Brand. Okay, and they've got the map. Yeah. They're in a bait store, by the look of it. Yeah. Okay. And so... So, um, so Mikey's, Mikey's comparing yeah. a, a local tourist map yeah, with, with his own map. With his own map. Wow. And so it must be... Um, I can see why this is cut. This is boring as Yeah, it just wouldn't have worked. It's almost identical. Yeah. Where's the X? Okay. So it's so information that they already cover in another scene. Yeah, right? pretty much. Wait a minute. Oh my god, I know these rocks. I know where this is. Guys, check it out. I know how to get here. This is Astoria. This is where the red stuff's buried. Come on, guys. We can go there. We can get oh, 
how it's Because it is just assumed. It is just, oh, it's just, <laughs> just like that mouth reading a pornographic it, magazine. It, it isn't. And he's getting into the Takashi register. And Chunk's eating all the ice cream. Chunk's eating. Oh, Chunk's eating, oh, Chunk's eating out of the ice cream container. Oh, it's Troy again. It's so they're going to meet Troy and the girls in this shop. Oh, so this is prior to Brant getting dumped off the, yeah. the hill. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so we're getting more of Troy here. Troy looks yeah. like a real swine. Already. Mm. Oh, he stole the porn magazine off mouth. And now he's looking at it. Oh, Troy. Chunk. Daddy. Chunk's still, yeah, Chunk's Chunk's still head over his head over. Shop data is trying to steal from the cash register. Is he? Yeah. That's, pe- yeah. that's crime. Pe- but he's using Pe-pe. technology, Pe-pe. so it's okay. Where's the, where's the person that works there? And that's what I mean. There's, nobody, there's no adults in no this one store. here. Steph's playing a video game. Uh, I say Chunk's got his head shoved in the ice cream. Troy's shoved yeah, it Troy's right pushing the in. Now Troy and... Troy's beating up Mikey. He's bullying him. And he's going to do something to his map. Jerk alert. Cut it out! No, Troy, oh dear. Come on, Steph. Steph's just got Chewy caught on egg white. So Troy's going to lie on. He's lighting the map on fire. Oh, no! He's smoking it. Oh, like a like a joint. Like a drug reference. Wow. All right. Is that Tab in the background? Oh, and now he's beaten up now. Why are they going to pick on the mums? And if you had noticed, the flame went out and then it lit again. Cut it out! And now they're wrestling, wrestling in the shop and there's no adult there. still no adult there. Oh. Oh, wow. and Brand. Wait a minute. Where does this fit into it then? Yeah. I just can't wait yeah, until Monday. Why is he with it? Brenda Troy's all angry and yeah, holds onto his arm. Hang on a minute. Why is Brand? This doesn't make sense, this scene where it slots in then for me. No. Yeah, that's pretty right. Because why is Brand with the kids? Yeah. Because the next sequence would be, so I can see why this has been dropped. One, it's slow and lagging. Is this mm-hmm. after the bike? No, it's no, not, it is it? Be. And basically they're covering, a lot of, yeah. they're covering a lot of little moments that get covered in other scenes. Hey! Yeah, but then that's, uh, this sequence now would have taken away from the first time Brant and that meet I'm Troy in the car. Yeah, it's just too much. screamed for Andy and she goes out. I'm angry. Yeah. The rest of you guys too, you're all history. We don't need friends like you in our lives. Oh, well, there's a mean Brant yeah, And that feels like that was edited in because he's like, we don't need friends like you in our lives. That's like a summary line. Yeah. Why did he say that? I missed the... What? I don't know, because I got him into trouble. <laughs> Oh, there's the, there's the, all right, so we're in another place. We're outside the restaurant. I'm laughing. <laughs> Data's fired. Data's, hit, Data's down fired. Down the hit me out the pincers of power. So that says that they're stronger than we thought, There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That really oh, hung on to mouth's butt. That's exactly how I wrote my pitch today. Look, now Data's showing off more of his gadgets. Are they bullets around his... Look like, yeah. This yeah. kid's stealing his this is a dumb, Look at this. It's a dumb gadget. What's this one? Don't show him. He's going to press like six buttons just to bring up some... Oh, oh no. Oh, he had some binoculars and they broke. Oh. Wow, this is terrible, oh, this footage. Now he's thrown footage. it all away. Okay, so then this basically just cuts to that sequence, obviously. So that was just extra yeah. footage that was definitely not needed. Yeah, so this is all in film, though, isn't it? But I never heard of anybody finding more stuff than what's already in the museum. Anyway, to grown-ups, this is already worth enough. Some archaeologist ecologist finds a map that's a bunch of hundred years old, throws a frame around it, and calls it art. Oh, uh, this is yeah, this is just story. Story. how much they how much language they're using to story tell? Yeah, yeah, it's too much, isn't it? Yeah. It's just this is a lighthouse here. It's repetitious. Yeah, it's, it's repetitious. Like, so, so it makes sense that they wouldn't cut this in the yeah, air. It's, it's, it's a lot of map talking and no one really cares. I'm surprised this And they're like doing a lot of summing, though. they're summing yeah, a lot of like, things up. up and knock on the door and say, hello, do you mind if we dig up your floor? No, 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 of course not. The, the place is obviously open for business. We can just go in, fake like we're going to get something to eat, and then join the case. What? what? Join the case. <laughs> is that a case of the joint? <laughs> Join the case. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, oh okay. Octopus scene, everybody. Yeah. What we're talking about. So they've fallen off the boat at this stage. Steph yes. Right in the hard here. And they're all, oh. and there is a giant <laughs> octopus tentacles. And he thinks she thinks he's having a. Well, Steph thinks he's getting a bit of fresh under the water. Just wait. She must think he has big arms. Oh, and <laughs> Steph's just belted now. <laughs> oh God. Oh no. And here's a giant rubber octopus, which I quite like. It's actually like not it. a bad design. It's not bad. It's not a bad um... And now Steph's getting trapped up. Oh, he's trying to pull. Oh, he's trying to pull him into his beak. And Mouth is actually helping her. Oh, the 
both fighting. Well, I think Mouth loved, you know, he yeah, does, he, he loves him. Oh, and now Mouth well, is trying to eat the octopus oh, and Calamari. Calamari. <laughs> into its tentacle. Data's oh, got an idea. Data's going to have some weapons. He saves everyone. He's got a V8, he's got a... And apparently it's waterproof. He's got... <laughs> And apparently octopuses hate music. I oh, see. So he's, he's chopped the tape player in the octopus's mouth. But are they yeah. trying to, to get it to dance here? Is it enjoying it? I don't it? get it. And yeah. now the octopus look, backs off. Because look, he stops and then... And the octopus looks like he's dancing. What is going on? And look, he comes oh, out again. Oh, no. So I think he's enjoying it. I think he's dancing away. Oh, I don't... Oh, I don't I'm lost with what happened and now. And that's, that's very nothing. confusing. And then you've got this one last little scene. Yeah. So we've got yeah. Chunk and Sloth together Chunk in the cage. Yeah, they've just come down into the cage. Hey, Jerry thing going out of his neck. <laughs> it's Sloth screaming up through Everybody a hole that's above them. So he only goes out to play at night. But you only like... Play at night, huh? Yeah. Hey guys! <laughs> hey guys! <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Is that where hey you guys come from? Yep. And then there's another scene later on where where, they Ch- uh, where yep. Sloth says it first. Okay. Yep. Oh. Hey guys. But then technically that would would have led into the fact that Chunk would have said it for him to then learn exactly. the line. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So there's no other place where. It's no Chunk reference says, for him to say hey Chunk you says guys the line first. Mm. Oh, okay. Yep. So that was four really terrible outtakes. Yeah. I don't, I'm glad I mean, they got rid of that map one. The the shop one and the next one where he is giving I too liked, much information. I liked that I liked that having um Troy Troy? Is that the name of the, yeah, the bad guy? guy yeah. So yeah. having the Troy guy appear earlier and have more of a part and, mm. and piss them off more and say, You guys should leave, you're a bunch of losers. Mm-hmm. That I think that was at least in concept that was a useful thing to put in. Um, because I didn't really the idea of them being the Goonies as a sort of derided group who were like the poor or the the, the derelict or the reject group never rang true for me. I never got it. Like yeah. nothing gave me that from sense the because you, mm-hmm. you never got to see them in comparison to any other kids. So yeah. you just thought, no, these guys all seem like heroes. They, they seem, seem pretty fine. good. Yeah, they seem pretty happy. Yeah, They're not, they right. seem like yep. losers. But having him in there as like an upper class hoity toity kind of like my dad runs the real estate stuff mm-hmm. and you guys are all losers and you I'm deserve to leave cool. the town. And then even having Brand then go, yeah, come on, guys, like, we, maybe we are losers and it's your fault. I think that's basically what he said. Yeah, it's like, okay. maybe we are losers and it's because of these, these losers that are making it work. But the scene was just... It, it doesn't but but like, the scene itself, well, I'm not saying the scene itself was great. No, it's drawn out, but it's just but slotting it into the story arc. It, it makes made it no work. sense. They could have gone back and, and made it work. I think you do need to see a little bit more of Troy. Because he is very... I wonder but don't about... you get enough of that with the car? Because he's got a flash yeah. car, he's got the girls... But he doesn't comment on the... But to me, to me in that, he's not commenting on the group. He's just commenting on Brand and Brand mm. and Andy. But don't... But don't, don't Which, as a couple, would be kind of say stuff earlier on about them being, the, you know, from the goondocks and all that sort of stuff. Mm. And they're from but the like when you when, 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 and... when the characters themselves talk about their place in society, it doesn't ring as true as having some representation of society comment on them. Yeah. Do you okay. know what I mean? Like... Mm. Because that could, could just be them feeling sorry for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. But they're going to lose their houses. I'd be pretty sorry for myself. But other <laughs> than that, so, that, so we have that. Which well, Then we've got the big map sequence, which is really just over-explaining it. Do you, do you, have you guys heard about like the amount of... Um, like when, people do, when films do reshoots and stuff? Mm. Like, yeah. I always, I'm always curious about how much in reshoots they try to... They're like, okay, well, we've got this missing, this missing, this missing. If we reshoot a scene or we add in a scene... Maybe let's just give it a try, add in a scene, and maybe that will cover what we think we missed in the other dailies. And then they roughly write a scene, they chuck it in like this, and then when you see the scene in its entirety, you're like, no, it feels like they're just cleaning house with this mm, scene and just kind yeah. of going, oh, we've got to remember to say that he like that knows his character. And we've got to remember. That's what I think. I think because it's better quality, the reshoot, yes. and they're very careful. Yes. But, um, and maybe they can edit faster and things like that. Because back in these days, they're editing manually. Mm. Yeah, true. Well, they're chopping up yeah. rolls of film. I think I think um, adding in, having too much to add in reshoots also shows either a time constraint on your writing mm-hmm. or yeah. sloppy writing because you haven't really thought of all the plot holes. Maybe they were given a couple of months to pump this one out because you know the guys that were involved because it's obviously a Spielberg story. So maybe yeah. he's given the story, but he wasn't part of it, so the script wasn't really toned. Maybe, maybe, maybe he does back it, then. That... Maybe he does a lot of his writing in in editing. Yeah, because he is. I would consider him to be a writer of most of his. He is a story. Is a, um, he at least writes the story in most of the mm-hmm. films he does? But I think he writes the story not. He writes the story in kind of concept at the beginning and then editing at the end. Yeah, he writes. But he doesn't shots. necessarily write yeah. dialogue, yeah. and he yeah. doesn't necessarily write scene by scene. Yeah, he writes mm-hmm. kind of in style of shots. Generally, what I think of when you see, because it's very much a Spielberg film. Is a Spielberg film. You can generally pick the mile off oh, by the yeah. way he yeah. constructs his scenes. Yeah. 
But but I mean, it's not it's not Spielberg directed. It's no, directed no, by no. the director of the Lethal. No, that's that's but that's what I'm saying. It's just kind of feel like because it's his story. I think story he still would have had a lot to do with the direction, though. I, yeah. I, I can't help but think that that is just Spielberg. He mm. he wants to be all over it. Yeah. Um, mm. But he needs someone who knows what they're doing to mm. be. Maybe they were cash, just cashing in on Spielberg's name because it was a story by and and that's where the script is a little. I mean, as we say, you know, Spielberg does a lot of his stuff by shots, but. There's definitely when you look at those ones, if they were in there, you think, okay, because mm. that means those most of those sequences, particularly those two, would have been at the start, so it would have made the start lag even more. So yeah. it's yeah. more and more time before we get those characters into the ground, which yeah. is where everything happens and where mm. we want it to be. Mm. And then the octopus sequence makes no sense because we've kind of had the finale; they've all jumped off the boat. Yeah. The, the boat's gone to shit; it's all fallen apart. The, the bad people have been thrown off the boat or tied up, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden an octopus turns up. Yeah. It's like mm. it, that should have happened before the boat. Well, has happened before the boat because yeah. you want the boat to be the finale, or it. Could have maybe they'd planned for it to happen after they fall off the boat, but before they get back on and finish the fight with the bad guys. Maybe. So it was like a sec. But even then, you'd need to integrate it into the bad guys. Like the bad guys would have need to. Oh yeah, you would have need to have. Maybe they did this though and didn't shoot it. But you would have need to have um, hinted that there was an octopus in the water before they pushed them off the plank. Well, you just need to show a little bit because of it, there was no. I didn't find. I found almost no no stakes in the walking of the plank stuff because I was like. Yeah. Is it deadly water? Like, mm. what, like, and they've just swam. Oh, except they've for Andy. Actually... Except for Andy, who she's tired. Shame, and she's yeah. like, I won't be able to. I won't be able to swim. And then Brand saves, saves her. But nobody else getting thrown in the water has mm. any stakes to it. Yeah. So it would have been better off them saying that there was like you would have seen something of an octopus. They knew it was down there and mm. throwing him into exactly, the water would have yeah. been the and relevance. And you're like, no, no, you would, yeah, you would go in there. The octopus is going to get you. Going to get you. And then they all get thrown in, and then they face the octopus. That would be fine. Makes sense. But they would have. They wouldn't have. That. But there's hints that they didn't think of it that way because they don't even know the octopus is in there. Because Steph and oh, not at all. They're all, wa- but they're also yeah. walking. Well, yeah, they, exactly. Yeah. Just come out the <laughs> yeah. Why are they walking in the water? They, they, they just jumped off into the water. I yeah, that's true. Well, no, Why are they walking yeah, back? Okay. It's like they're walking into the water in the deep part. Is there? Isn't there like a shallow part? I think there yeah, is. Yeah, but why would they be? They look like they're getting into the deep. They're walking mm. towards the ship. <laughs> yeah, it's so strange. You're right. It's yeah. really strange. Yeah, it's it's one of those. Things. Is it just as they come off the slide that the octopus scene was? We don't no, know, uh, do we? No, because that that looks like it's after they've fallen off the ship. Because they don't go into the water at no. all. They they get onto the ship first, and then they go. Then into they the get water. told to, and they will jump off. But the slide didn't that happen? Just oh, that's getting true. To, so they do oh, come down the slide, right. so that would have fitted in then, mm. probably. Yes. Okay. So, okay. All right. Good call. Good good catch. I win. Good catch. <laughs> yes, Jane, you got it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Jane win. has a win. Jane's, well, Jane's <laughs> won again. Yeah, Jane's defeated me point. again. It's just like the last one. <laughs> no, she hasn't. We're a team. No, I know and she that. led the team no. for a moment just there no. and just took us into look, a grand new area. Last, last like, time we did, look, last time we did the breakfast club. When we did the breakfast club. When we did the breakfast club. I'm just going to point this out because I'm with Jane. When we did the breakfast club pitches and my wife's a huge fan of the breakfast club. And I'm not that we compete against each other at whatsoever. But my uh, wife listened to all of our pitches for the new um, sequels or prequels yeah. we chose to do. Yeah. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, I've done all right. I think they're all really good. And the wife just goes, I really like James. James is the best. And I was like, get out. This is it. This is the best one. She but goes I, to the Eagles. Well, my, and she my mom, other my, one, of my, one of my mum's favourite people it's on the podcast later. is Jane. Yes. Oh, well, there yeah. you go. She's I'm like, winning. who's that lady? Who's that lady? I was like, that's Jane. She's like, oh, she's great. She's, she's really, really nice. She's a lady great. as well. Yeah. I've never been with her. That was when you'd only been on one episode. And she'd listen to like six episode she's like oh great so I've been episode. in six what am I mum she's like who was on that first episode that Jane lady she's, she's really nice I'm she's very smart like tell numbers. your mum we can have a, a lunch date and I will <laughs> sign a uh, sign any picture of myself yeah. I'm just here making up the numbers that's all that's happening anyway. alright well that's a that's a very good insight into those uh, outtakes slash deleted scenes yes. let's return to the podcast table and do our final let's do our final um, wrap up final scores alright so now um, to finish up the review section of our <laughs> the, Goonies, the Goonies pitching in uh, episode. Let's kind of do final scores and I'll get out my calculator. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he likes to do things. I like points. to add it up and see what we give it. Okay. Who wants to go first? I've got a mouthful of food. Um, Jane? I, don't, I don't know how. How we, What's the score? So, so score out of 10. Yep. You can, give it, you can give it a decimal if you want. I'm okay. a fan of decimals. You like decimals, yep. Just because it gives you specificity. Oh, that how I, do we... How does one score? This? Oh, okay. One thing I would like to say is when I score, I don't... I try to... Even so, if so you love I'm, it? Yes. I'm trying to think of the audience. Okay. I'm not thinking... So I'm trying to think of the audience and I'm, so, I'm trying to be as objective as possible. All right. Um... I don't know. Do you know what I mean? So I, I don't want to be like if if I if so I don't want to let the fact that if I saw a movie when I was five mm-hmm. and I loved it then, mm-hmm. but now I know that it's not a perfect film, I want to try and be balanced in that. I don't want to go with the five year old review. 
He doesn't like to trip nostalgia. How do you feel because, about that? Because because I feel like is that, that how you score? Cause, cause it just me, affects me. It does. It does affect just me. Just because for me, I think the point of a score, and I just want to be clear so that people know what, how I score, um, as distinct from you guys potentially, is I think the point of scoring something is to recommend it to others, so they have a gauge of whether or not they will like it. Can I not to celebrate how much I like it, but to give them a? Okay. Can I give it a, my kids' score and then my? Very good. Oh, I like that. Great idea. That's very good. I like that. Okay. The, the kid in me yes. who loved this film, yeah. who was changed by this film, mm. who probably went into performing arts because of these kinds of films, wow, cool. Wow, cool. Um, gives it a 12 and a half out of 10. Holy crap. That's our biggest score ever. Um, because truly it was, yeah. 12 and a half. It was 12 and a half. But I mean, I I mean guess, and, great, and that taps into your, yeah. your five-year-old's lack of knowledge of maths. Yeah, yeah. Totally, exactly. Yeah. Now let's bring it back to... <laughs> and it was never my strong point, because I was bullied the, by my maths To the jaded, oh, no. older, Just adult sorry. versions that we've become, let's see what your grading is now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so if I'm recommending it to others now... Yes, yeah, so they're, they're coming in, they have no idea about it, and you want to give a fair and accurate kind of score, so they won't be disappointed. Like, if you say it's going to be 10, and they go in and go, well, I thought it was like a six. Okay. They're not well, going to be like, you're a bad was, reviewer. Because it was still set in the 80s, okay. mm. so for an 80s film, yes. that I yes. am giving a rating sure. today, in 2019, are we? Yeah, yes. yes. Um, I'm going to give it a seven. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Yep. I like that. All right. The not that it matters what I like because it's changed score. It's fine. <laughs> so I don't want to be. Kid, I don't want to be pretentious. The, the kid <laughs> version of me, because um, I'm going to steal James' concept. So the That's kid a great version idea. of me I like that. Uh, would have probably given this ten out of ten. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, like I said, I would have watched it as a, as a youngin over and over. It's one of those movies you would have rented out from a video store. Hi to all the last video stores out there. Totally. And you probably would have watched five times when you had it in yep. the time for the day that you had it. That's because wow. you just like this is so good and you just put it back on because it's just one of those films because it's cool it's got things happening it's got I pirates. couldn't watch movies over and over again yeah but this when I was younger I'm I talking about ever, the youngie, younger ever. couldn't you oh no. god that says a lot sorry. Sonny I mean Christian like you do that it says you a should. Lot. like I don't want to like I love the fact that you do that but I'm just like oh I feel like I missed out because like, there's no way I could watch a movie uh, over and over again that says a lot it. about your I, academic level because kids love repeat you know, rep- really? like repetition is everything like maybe maybe I could watch it once a day, but I couldn't just watch it on a loop. Oh, I get we bored. just watched. It. I just remember all the lines. If it went on again, yeah, we'd watch it. Again. I, I could like watch a whole series. No, mm. no. Or or watch a, watch like all the Back to the Futures and then watch them all again. No, I couldn't do that either. No. I have to leave some gaps. I had so a sheltered childhood. Okay, no, no, that's I, that's I, 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 I love that. I also had a lot of problems. So, so yeah, so ten, 10 out of ten, Buster. Right, that ten out of ten. Okay, because I'm writing down the kids' scores as well. Ten out of ten. So that's my kids' score. Yeah. Okay, and what are you saying for the older jaded version? who watched it the other night. I would say. Uh, look, I will give it. Uh, I'll give it a solid eight. A solid I think eight. I sit around at eight with most of my eighties films. I'll give yeah. it an eight. There's... Now I feel like I've really let myself do. See, I really, no. I really respect you your seven because that's much closer. You to were twelve and a half. Okay. But it's because I'm recommending it. Yeah, exactly, but and, to and me, I'm that's what a review is for. It at eight. I'm to me, that's what a review is for. Imagine recommending it to a review is for somebody else. A review is A review isn't for me. A review is for somebody else. That that's how I see it. That's what I see its purpose as. So when I score something, it's not about me going. It's my perfect film. Ten out of ten. It's about going. Ooh, how do I try and be fair for what I think and what I think other people will think? Okay. Because I'm recommending. You know, Courtney it. loves it. I'm name dropping. Yes, oh. yes, she does. So she what? What? What, friend, what we need to do is pick a film that uh, Christian hasn't seen. We give it a score of what we think, and then he watches oh, it. That would be amazing. And yes. sees can, we that, can we do that okay. today? Let's Uncle do that today. Have you seen Uncle That's Buck? Okay. No, I haven't <gasps> seen Uncle Buck. We're not doing Uncle Buck unless <laughs> Courtney's involved because she we, loves we, it. We, she's a big fan. Yeah. Okay. Courtney is twenty. She's twenty twenty one. We're giving uh, a big shout out to one of our work yeah, colleagues who so has to come on the show. And because we're all so old, well, Sonic yes. isn't as old as Ryan and I. I'm close. Um, no, he's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, Courtney is 21 yeah. and she loves the Goonies. She loves the She Breakfast had a Goonies Club. shirt on yesterday. Yeah, she's a oh, massive well. fan of the 80s movies. They're we're giving you a call song. out, Buster. <laughs> she doesn't like cartoons either. She doesn't like Disney much. She'll watch Pixar, but she's not a big I don't fan know, of it. No, she doesn't like Disney. She just hasn't watched much of the yeah, Disney. Yeah, she's not She's not a big fan. Okay, well, I hope she listens to this. Anyway, um, so, so, so we've adult. got eight for me. Okay, 12 and eight. Seven for Jane. Okay, so adult kids version. score. Kids score, I feel very... You were, I'm just going to give it a kids score. I was like six when I watched it the first time, and I, I may have watched some of it again when I was about 10 or 11. I would probably give it about a seven. Okay. Uh, because I enjoyed oh, it. It's going down then. I enjoyed it. It's <laughs> if it's seven when he's a kid, Jesus. where's it heading? Jesus I enjoyed crackers. it. I enjoyed oh, it, but I, but I, but I didn't. I didn't. This is going to be a business. I didn't feel like watching the whole thing. Like I didn't feel imp, imp, like compelled oh, to watch the whole thing. 
Um, Whereas so, I'm struggling to stay awake. Too busy watching that horse drown in never ending story. <laughs> All right, anyway. <laughs> Uh, Artax, um, oh, don't bring it up. Um, Apparently, okay. it really did drown. That's an urban myth. <laughs> what? Don't yeah, Milo and Otis. Milo and Otis. Yeah, Milo and Otis. The, the cat, the cat, oh, no, like the cat that movies. falls off the waterfall was was like thirteen cats that they just threw off the waterfall and they apparently let them die. Yeah. Um, apparently, and that was because that was before the appropriate treatment it's of animals. Laws Who the there. hell do you think you are to put that inside I'm my head? Up the I'm horse. so sorry. All right, look up. The um, horse. Okay, okay, so and then for my grown-up score, oh man, I I, I wish it well. No, you and don't. You I do, do not. No, I don't dislike don't it. Don't you patronise our <laughs> movie. He wishes it well. I'm so sorry. Good luck, guys, and all it's the best. It's done well enough for no. itself. Two, two without your well wishing. 2017, so, it made the... What was you it? Like, dirty I'd be like, pitch. such a wanker. I'm so sorry, <laughs> son of a pitch. I'm so sorry. I don't mean it like that. I just mean it's very charming, and I don't hate it, and I don't want it to he suffer. Right. I don't want it to suffer, but it doesn't... <laughs> it's just not enough. Oh. Um, so I'll give it a six and a half. Okay, well that's all Whoa, right. We're, man. We're, 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 I'm gonna, just just by just the way you guys made me feel, I gave it an extra point five. <laughs> so I gave it an extra point five to see how bad. We bullied you into that. Yeah. Yeah. So Good. let's let's check out our kids' score. Oh dear. For um, the record, do you really record. feel bullied? Do we need to talk? Guys? If you want to go down to six, okay. we're happy with that. Okay, we don't want to have to have turned your okay, opinion. Okay, because you're very five. kind, I'll go to six point two five. Okay, six point two five. Okay. All right, that's so specific. So our kids' score altogether is eight. Yay! Woo. So that's our like nostalgia that's score solid. and then um, our, our adult score is seven okay well that's not too bad yeah okay so that's pretty good so that is the pitching in score for the goonies that's all um, right we've landed for right what there. that is worth we don't love it because it's a perfect film we love it well right because i'm speaking on your yes you split sure do um, please. we love it because it hit notes that we needed at that age to be hit it That's had really nice. the adventure was there which is always fun mm. and the characters you could relate to them they were american still you know it was far yeah. away but you felt there was a little chunk inside all of us yeah um, trying to eat and his Mikey way out. And <laughs> had, had quote, quotable lines quotable lines like yeah. quotable line after yeah. line had just like i said Great casting. Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal casting. Great yeah. characters. Yes, yeah. like we said, some weaknesses in there. But there's some murder, there's yeah, some, there's some bullet some, holes the size some, of monster yeah. balls. But it's full of action, it's kids going through caves, it's an yeah. adventure. I mean that's what that's what kids what love. Like yes, what you want to see when you're young. Romancing the stone. Even though I watch Romancing the Stone. <laughs> <laughs> well that's another episode. Um, yeah. Alright, well that brings us to the end of our review section okay. of uh, this episode of Pitching In. Uh, and um, absolutely fantastic. The Goonies. Cool. Did yeah. we find out if that horse died? Or... Uh, <laughs> right. Contrary to a rumour, the horse that played Artax did not really die during the filming of Thank the Thank goodness, Sad podcasters. Thing. Thank goodness. So Only, that's an internet rumour. Only 13 Milos did, but the most... Oh, <laughs> that's I, terrible. I can't watch animals in movies. And no. I just can't do it. It's no. not, cause they, it still happens. Yeah. Sorry, political. Okay. Sorry. Maybe. And there it is, part one of the Goonies episode of Pitching In. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you to my guests, Ryan Wisdom and Jane Rate for joining me. Please tune in next week where we pitch our very own sequels to the Goonies and try to guess movie plots based on bargain bin DVD covers and you can catch more episodes of Pitching In on Podbean, iTunes and Facebook. Please like and subscribe if you feel so inclined I'm Christian Barrett and until next time remember that kindness can be critical Yeah. Ryan's having that. a coughing fit. We do, um, I am eating too much during this podcast. Me too. It's just rage over Kristen's comments. Mm, I'm so sorry. Not, not.